Okay, good evening. This is the uh, Lakeville Select Board and acting as the Wage and Personnel Board as needed remote location meeting on April 25th, 2022 at um, 6.30 p.m. Um, is there anybody uh, that's uh, taping this meeting? What the hell is all that stuff? It's uh, taping this meeting um, and um, Lakeham is, is uh, taping this meeting. In accordance with uh, provisions of Chapter 20, Acts of 2021 and April 25th, 2022, public meeting of the Lakeville Select Board we will be held remotely. However, to view this meeting in progress, please go to facebook.com slash lakecam. You do not need a Facebook account to view this meeting. This meeting will be recorded and available to be viewed at a later date at www.lakecam.tv backslash. First item on the agenda is select board announcements. The final date to register to vote for the special and annual town meeting is Tuesday, April 26th at 8 p.m. Please visit the town website under news to get further information on how to register to vote. The annual and special town meeting will take place on May 16th, 2026, 22, beginning at 6.30 p.m. Um, in the Eponiquit High School Auditorium. The uh, annual town meeting will begin at uh, 7 p.m. The town, town has seven, several open positions we are now hiring for. Also, there are different vacant positions on various town committees. Information is available. Uh, positions can be found on the town website under news. Okay, town administrators uh, announcements. I think Ari might have had some trouble some technical uh -oh. difficulty okay we'll come back to him i guess okay since we have to wait and we have to wait till 6 45 i would um like to um go to item number 10 which is discuss and uh vote uh to, on appointing a select board serpid um delegate uh, his, his pc crashed again uh, so um, I'll entertain. Okay, I'll entertain a motion to appoint um, a member as a member of the select board to the Serpent de delegate as a Serpent delegate. Um, I'll make a motion. I, it's it's currently um, Lorraine, right? Okay, so I make a motion that we appoint uh, Selectman Carboni as the Serpent Commission member. I'll second that motion. Any discussion? All those in favor? Carboni, aye. Fabian, aye. Uh, La Camera, aye. Okay. Is that, number 10. Uh, town administrator is back. So, town administrator's announcements. Hopefully, I'm back. We'll see. I don't know what's happening. My computer keeps crashing on me. Um, so, I'll do what we can. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I have several announcements. The town's health department has received a $17,836 grant from the Massachusetts Department of Health for COVID response activities. Eligible uses include case investigation, contact tracing, vaccination efforts, and testing. Uh, the grant's available through the end of FY22. Um, town staff had an initial meeting with MG&E regarding the installation of electric vehicle chargers at various locations around town. The chargers would be funded by grant and would require users to pay for their use. Potential locations include town hall, the Senior Center, Ted Williams Camp, the Old Library, Asawamsit Elementary, and the High School. Um, we'll bring more information to the board as this project develops. Right now, it's all just conceptual. Um, <clears throat> uh, some news on the CPA. Uh, per the ballot question, CPA takes effect on July 1, 2022. Um, bills will be going out with the first quarter for FY23. Uh, staff met today to plan on implementation of internal structures and compliance, including the new fund, uh, the tax bills, and a notification to the state. Um, as you know, this program would be managed per the bylaws by the Community Preservation Committee, which consists of one member each from the Conservation Commission, the Historical Commission, Planning Board, the Park Commission, the Housing Authority, which we don't have, and three at-large members appointed by the Select Board. As previously noted, there'll need to be an amendment presented at Fall Town Meeting to address the inclusion of a Housing Authority representative in the original bylaw. The Select Board can either wait until that bylaw has been amended or solicit appointments beginning in May constitute the committee in FY23 as stated in the ballot question. The first year of the program should be devoted to a development of the community preservation plan and the project application process. The state match is provided retrospectively. 
based on the prior year's revenue. So we won't know that the, what that first stretch looks like looks like until probably fall of 2023. Sorry, fall of FY23. Um, so um, staff completed an application last week for municipal fiber grant through the community compact program. Um, it's about $170,000 grant, or the application is. If awarded, the grant will be used to extend fiber to the Old Town Hall, the Animal Shelter, the Transfer Station, NASA Wampstead Elementary School. In addition, the grant would extend our network to the Taunton Water Tower, which will allow better functionality for the management of our public safety communication system. Finally, the FY23 bu recommended budget has been posted online in advance of town meeting. Um, we'll have more information that comes along, but um, we posted some information on the, we posted links to it on the town Facebook page, as well as on the website. And of course, for the public, there'll be more information regarding town meeting coming um, uh, uh, in the next few weeks. Thank you. Okay, um, since we have another few minutes here, um, we'll go to uh, number 14, is discuss a possible vote on the request from uh, Tuesday Club of uh, Asona to place a sign on the town property for the annual um, Strawberry Festival. Um, usually the sign is placed um, a week before the event. So I'll we'll entertain a motion to uh, uh, allow them to put a sign on town property, which is uh, located uh, at the intersection of uh, Pickens and Precinct, and it's way back off the road. So it's, it hasn't been a problem, but they haven't had it in a few years. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Carboni, aye. Fabian, aye. Uh, La camera, aye. Okay, continue on here. Item number 12 is to discuss a possible vote to appoint uh, David Freights as animal control officer slash constable, Darcy Lee as assistant control officer, um, Lee, Lisa Ponolowski as assistant control officer, and Ronnie Freights as assistant control officer. I'll entertain a motion to approve them. So moved with um, terms to expire April 30th, 2023. Uh, is that correct, Tracy? Yes. Okay. Um, second that motion, uh, Leah? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Carboni, aye. Thank you, and I, sorry. That's okay. Uh, La camera, aye. All right, let's see what else we got here. Uh, I think the other stuff is gonna take a few minutes. We have minutes. Uh, we can um, um, we can discuss the um, schedule and um, discuss the schedule of select board meetings for um, July, June, July, and August. Uh, what's being proposed? That's number fifteen, right? Thank you, Mr. Chair. If we can just back up just a sec, I, I'm oh never mind. It's it's on here. So we have May sixteenth town meeting, and we have May. 23rd scheduled for um, a regular select board meeting, correct? That's correct. Okay. So if we have dates of um, May 16th, May 23rd, June 13th, June 27th, July 11th. And I think there was a correction on one of these, uh, Ari. July 23rd. I uh, can't hear you, Ari. All right. Was there a correction on August 22nd? It was supposed to be July. August 23rd, I think. Is that correct? Okay. Okay. So I'll entertain a motion to uh, approve those dates. I'll make um, so moved with discussion. Um, Second. Discussion, yep. Um, I think that the board should um, begin to move back into um, in person meetings beginning in May, I guess the May 23rd meeting. I mean, we can do that in a second, second vote if we want. I don't think we have to do that, Lorraine. What I, what I will, what actually both of us suggested a month ago, I think somewhere in there, that I'm okay going back in person as long as they we have the hybrid office hybrid office option uh, for well as well. So that's okay with me. Are you okay with that, Lorraine? I mean, uh, Leah. Yep. I'm okay. Mr. Chairman. Yep. Do I sound good? Okay. Um, I would respectfully request if we're going to move to in person, would it be possible to start the meeting a little earlier? Um, Six o'clock earlier? 
You mean yeah. six o'clock earlier? Sure. Um, I have no objection. I'd be fine with that actually. as well. You know that? Thank you. Did you say you don't have any objection, Lorraine? No objection. No objection? Mm -mm. Um, okay. I kind, of, I kind of, sorry, let me fix this. I'm sorry. I kind of like that too. Um, okay, that's fine. In the past, I think they were all done very late after seven because, you know, we wanted there. folks to get there, but, um, you know, folks can watch on Facebook too to participate. So. Oh, he needs the Tylenol. Okay, can you please <laughs> mute, mute that, mute that, Tracy? Thank you. Oh, she's muted. Um, all those in favor? Of the meeting dates, Carboni, aye. Fabian, aye. The camera, aye. Okay. Um, that's it on that one. What do we got here? Let's see. Um, Mr. Chairman? Yeah. I know my sound was off and I apologize. Um, I just want to make sure I got the dates right. Did you? Um, I had sent a correction um, from the, for July. It should be the 25th, not the 23rd. 23rd oh. is a Saturday. That's what I thought, yeah. Okay. Um, I, did I hear you saying something about the 22nd of August? Uh, we weren't sure if it was the 23rd or the 22nd, but you just corrected what the correct date was. So yeah, the 22nd's um, fine. That's a, um, that's, a, that's a Monday. Okay. Okay, so um, somebody want to make a motion to amend the the uh, vote to July twenty fifth twenty fifth so moved any discussion all those in favor Carboni I I uh, La Camera I okay so that's all. thank you you're welcome so we got six forty two so. I don't see any minutes on here, do I? Uh, I no, we didn't have any minutes this time. No, no I, minutes. See, I didn't see any minutes here. So. Um, okay, we'll just wait then. Do you want to do 11? Uh, uh, discuss we the hiring process. A couple of minutes, okay. I can do that one pretty fast if you want. Okay. Go ahead. Number 11 is to. You know, uh, we received a letter of resignation from the council and aging director and discussed the hiring process. Right. Um, we received a, a letter of resignation from um, Kelly Howley, who's going to uh, work as a new um, council aging director in uh, Barnstable, I believe. Um, and we wish her congratulations. Um, Timeline's fairly short. She um, is, uh, her last day on, uh, on work's gonna be um, uh, May 13th. Um, I hate I that I can't look at us with, um, first. With the, uh, oops, sorry, what was that? I had a conversations with the chair, with the chair of the uh, Council on Aging, and with um, Lori Fahey, who is the um, Ministry of Assistant there. I propose that we, I, I, I would request that the, that the board, and we'll talk about this later on in new business, if you like, if it's not in order here, mm -hmm. the board um, designate her as uh, Lori as the interim director for a specific period of time. Lori's interested only in doing a specific period of time, maybe for six months. Uh, something along those lines, um, and that that that's the entire that's that's really all I had to say for that item. Okay, so you'll bring it back um, yeah. to us. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, any of the members got a question on that or? No, just that um, I wish Kelly well. I mean, my goodness, yeah. um, she's done such a fantastic job all these years, and you know, going through the new, um, you know, constructing of a new center, and um, oh, I babe. think this is going to be. They're very lucky to have her. Yeah, um, Kelly did a, a great job with COVID too and keeping uh, all, uh, so much programming available. Um, it was not an easy task. Okay. Uh, I got you there. We, got, Do we need to uh, accept the letter of resignation? Yes, or... I think we do. Yeah. Okay. Okay, somebody want to make that motion? Sure, I'd like a motion that we accept um, Kelly Holly, the Council on Aging Directors um, resignation with the last day of work for May 13th, 2022. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Carboni, aye. Fabian, aye. The camera, aye. Okay, uh, uh, number three on the agenda at 645 uh, is to meet with the town moderator and the Lakeville representatives of the Freetown Lakeville Regional School District 
to discuss the possible reappointment of Bob Marshall to the Old Colony uh, Regional Vocational Technical High School um, District. Um, this um, meeting is um, is moderated by the town administrator, town administrator, town moderator. So I ask Katie Goodfellow to uh, please take over this part of the meeting. Thank you, Mr. Camera. Um, I do have a question about who is here from the Freetown Lake Hill School Committee. Uh, I'm President Steven Sylvia. Stevens, and is there anybody else? Do we have enough I representation? I do not see others on the line at the moment. Mr. LaCamera, is that enough representation to hold a joint meeting? So what do we got here? We got one, two, three, four, five, six. So six, and there's uh, three members of the three members of the regional school committee missing. Mm -hmm. So based on that, we have a quorum. Okay. Okay, so as moderator, I uh, call this joint meeting of the Lakeville Select Board and the Freetown Lakeville School Committee to order. Um, our item of business is to the reappoint uh, Ms. Dr. Robert Marshall to as the Lakeville representative to the Old Colony Regional Vocational Technical High School. So I need a motion. Uh, I'll make a motion to uh, reappoint uh, Bob Marshall to the uh, Old Colony Regional Vocational Technical High School District. Um, and uh, we know what the term is here. To May 1st, 2025. Thank you. Thank you very much. I need a second. second. I'll second that motion. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Um, the only discussion I would say is that Bob has served on this whole colony for a long time, a couple of times actually. And uh, he does such a great job. And we appreciate all his time and the effort that he's put into the, to the uh, old colony school district. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, if I'd yep. like to say just for our purposes, um, Bob has been a tremendous help to me in my first year on, on the job, um, both of this as well as other, his other official position. But um, in, with Old Colony particularly, we went through a, uh, it could have been a very difficult budget process. And um, Bob was a very effective mediator and um, extractor of information. And I, I think he did valuable service to the town. Thank you, Ari. Thank you, Ari. So if there is no further discussion, we may go to a vote. All those in favor, please say aye. Carboni, aye. Fabian, aye. The camera, aye. Sylvia, aye. And that's everyone. Thank you. The motion passes. Congratulations, Mr. Marshall. <laughs> Thanks, Thank Katie. you very much. Thanks, Bob. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, and now to make this official, I need a motion to adjourn this meeting. So moved. So moved. Okay. <laughs> Hearing no opposed. We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Katie. Thanks, Katie. Thanks, everybody. Okay. All right. Okay, we did that. We did that. Uh, we got 10 minutes here. We did that. Okay. The number four isn't uh, timed, right? No. Mm -mm. Well, we got to make sure that. Um, oh, number four. You're right. Excuse me. Uh, we should do number four. Yes. Okay. <laughs> number four is to review the possible vote to place warrant article number 11 on the annual town meeting warrant and vote to uh, approve the final warrant for the annual town meeting of May 16th, um, 2022. So that is number four. Mr. Chairman, if it's all right, I'd like to speak to this for, for a few, for a moment. Sure. Um, so the, as you know, there were some um, back and forth on the uh, uh, PNSs and what they, and what they contained. Um, and we still have some uncertainty there, but we have, but, but we developed, we, the, the article's been drafted in a way that's acceptable to uh, town council um, and describes the locations. There's some uncertainty still remaining regarding the actual number of, I'm um, um, sorry, regarding the actual acreage involved here. 
um, especially for the 61B property. Um, that is because there is some uh, question regarding uh, land that may have been taken out of chapter or not. However, the, um, the, 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 the exhibit B, which um, was provided in the PNS, cites the full property, 138.1 acre sets that we put in. Um, the, um, we're we're going to get into this a little more later on if the board does decide to put this on um, uh, article on uh, regarding the um, uh, some of the current um, variables and uncertainties that we don't quite know about yet and may not know about for some may not know about in time uh, for the, for the vote to happen, but which we'll we'll cite as, as sort of known unknowns at this point. Those include the covenant that we've discussed. Um, there, there's um, some type of lease we believe we're not sure what it looks like. Um, on the operational cost, uh, the the and the provision of the uh, PNS regarding property and equipment, um, all of those are, are issues that the that the board and the town should be aware of. So um, that's why I just wanted to to say that and let you know that we have made the corrections on the article language, so it's it's acceptable to council at this point. It makes it makes sense um, within the context of the uh, agreements. Okay, I'll entertain a motion to. Um, um... Put Article 11 as presented, unless one of the board members wants to read the article into the minutes. Um, so moved, but um, I think we should probably read it into the minutes. Okay, just for the public. I don't... <laughs> <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> you want me to read you it? Share, I'm yeah, sure. Do you want me to share a screen on that, Mr. Chairman? I can, I can yeah, we should, call yeah. it. Okay, yeah. All right. Give me a moment. I think, uh oh, Ari, are you muted again? Yeah. Okay. Lorraine, you're going to read it, right? Hold on. I'm, I'm working on it. Give me a second here. Okay. I've got, a, got some issues with my computer today. All right. All right. Opening it now. Going to the article. I appreciate your patience. Voila. Okay. Okay, I'll read it. Um, I make a motion that we um, add Article 11 to the annual town meeting for May 16th, 2022, to see if the town will vote to A, authorize the select board to acquire, by purchase, gift, and or eminent domain for active and passive recreation, agricultural, open space, and general municipal purposes, and on such terms and conditions as the select board deems appropriate, all or a portion of the following parcels of land. A parcel of land located at 44 Clare Pond Road containing 138.10 acres, more or less, and being described in deed recorded with the Plymouth County Registry of Deeds in book 40414, page 215, and the parcels of land located at 1 Cedarberry Lane containing 12.61 and 0 0.71 acres, and land at 31 Stetson Street containing 7.09 acres, more or less, and described in deeds recorded in book 35204, page 120, page 121, and page 122, said parcels being all the parcels owned by the owners thereof and now or formally classified under general law chapter 61A and or general law C 61B. B, raise and appropriate transfer from available funds and or borrow 13,625,000 dollars for the purpose of funding said acquisition and costs incidental or related thereto and to meet this appropriation to authorize the treasurer with the approval of the select board to borrow all or a portion of said sum under general law chapter 44 sections 7 and seven, eight, and or any other enabling authority and to issue bonds or notes of the town, therefore, 
provided, however, that the appropriation authorized hereunder shall be expressly contingent upon the passage of a proposition two and a half ballot question under the provisions of general law, chapter 59, section 21C. C, authorize the select board to apply for, accept and expend any funds that may be provided by the Commonwealth or other public or private sources to defray all or a portion of the cost of said acquisition, including but not limited to grants and or reimbursement from mm -hmm. the Commonwealth under the Self-Help Act, General Law, Chapter 132A, Section 11, now so-called land grants, and D, authorize the select board to enter into any and all agreements and execute any and all instruments as may be necessary or appropriate to effectuate the forthgoing acquisition or take any action in relative thereto. And this is be proposed by the select board and will require a two thirds vote at town meeting. Second. Um, any discussion? Um, all those in, oh. I All just had one question. It's proposition two and a half ballot question, not debt exclusion. He made it. I know, sorry. Debt ex it's a debt exclusion is a type of ballot question. Um, we, we had went back and forth with, with uh, uh, council a little bit. Proposition two and a half section cited, chapter 50, 59. Uh, yes. of the code cited, general law cited, is um, is the part that applies to both the debt exclusions. overrides and debt exclusions, yeah. Okay, all right. All those so it covers in favor. both. Oh, excuse me, all those in favor? Carboni, aye. Fabian, aye. On uh, the camera, aye. Now I'll entertain a motion to uh, approve the, um, um, I see, make sure we get this right here. They've already approved the articles, right? Mm -hmm. um, have the board approve the vote to approve the annual town meeting from May 16th, uh, 2022. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Um, the only discussion that I would say is that um, we ask the board to please come in and sign it tomorrow if possible, so the town clerk can uh, get it posted on the website. Sure. Um, all those in favor? Carboni, aye. Page one, I. Uh, the camera, I. Okay. Thank you. All right. Let's here with that. Uh, the special. That's all set. That's all set. Yeah. Okay. We're going to meet with the finance committee here in just one moment. Just so everybody knows, we have to post the time and we have to wait for that time. So. <laughs> Okay. This feels like a very long minute, Mr. Chairman. I know, doesn't it? Here we go. Okay, it's seven o'clock and uh, we had to meet with the finance committee and the town moderator for the May 16th, 2022 special and annual uh, town meeting warrant review. Um, finance committee, um, Adam, are you the chair? 
No, we haven't picked one yet, but for tonight I will be. Okay. So would you call the uh, finance committee to order, please? Yes, call the finance committee uh, meeting. Can I um, just check who's here? Brian? Present. Uh, Christopher? Present. Katie? Okay. And Lawrence? Present. Okay. Um, so the process here is, is to um, just discuss an overview of the, uh, the Warren articles. Um, and um, it's up to the finance committee whether they want to make a recommendation to put on the warrant when it gets printed tomorrow. So if you don't feel that you do, or maybe you want to do some of them, that's entirely up to you. So Adam, um, that'll be up to the finance committee what they want to do if they want to make a recommendation now. Um, you know, as an example, the, um, the four um, zoning articles, the hearings, so the zoning articles are on Thursday night with the, with the planning board. So you may not want to recommend those uh, at this point until the hearing is completed, but that's entirely up to you. Okay? Okay. Okay. All right, so we're gonna to go to the special town meeting. Um, and the special town meeting is on May 16th, uh, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. And then the, to act on the following articles. Um, Ari, can you bring that up, please? Okay, so the first article is to see if the town will vote to transfer a sum of $3,639.28 from free cash for the following unpaid bill from a prior year, uh, which basically is uh, for the fire department, um, some medical uh, supplies, the bill didn't, the bill didn't get in, come in until after uh, June 30th. So um, does the finance committee wanna make a recommendation on this or? Anybody on the team have anything to say? Um, maybe what we do is go through and the items that we don't have open hearings for still, we could do a recommendation on those um, and come back. Um, I, I had a quick question before we get going. If, if Ari or somebody has the numbers on hand, just as we go through these, what the free cash balance and the... Um... Um, I can access that if you give me a moment, Brian. Yeah, okay. there we go. It's in your budget book, uh, Brian. Yeah. So that well, helps. Shared under a stack of paper right now. So okay. <laughs> I thought we'd have it handy. <laughs> Are you getting it, Larry? I have my budget book right here. If you want. I, am. I am. Okay. Stand by. And if the reserve fund's next to it, that'd be good, just for the record. The reserve fund is at 143.5, even. There you go. Okay. Free cash starting balance before the budget gets underway is 2,417,877. Thank you, sir. Okay, so does the finance committee want to make a recommendation on this or not? I mean, this just looks like basic housekeeping, right? The bill came in after the deadline, so we'll be able to pay it anyways till then. Um, I mean, unless there is additional discussion, I'd make a motion to the, the finance committee recommend uh, voting yes in article one at the special town meeting. Second. Adam, you want to call a vote? Adam, you're on mute. Um, vote was uh, so we'll vote to approve. Uh, I'll go through. Brian, aye. Larry, aye. Chris, and aye. And Adam, aye. Okay, the second article is to see if the town will vote to transfer the sum of $100,000 from free cash to supplement the appropriation state stated below and was presently voted in Article 1 of the May 10th, 2021 annual town meeting fiscal year beginning July 1, 2021 for various town departments. So the first item is a transfer for um, snow and ice wages of $10,000 and snow and ice expenses for um, 
$90,000. Open for discussion with the finance team? Yes, please. No questions on it? No, no, no questions here. Probably just the reminder that this is one of the only areas that we are allowed to spend in deficit. I would note for the board and the finance committee that we do have an increase in the snow and ice budget for program for FR23. Wouldn't have been enough to cover this, but it is an increase of about um, $30,000. Okay, Adam. All right, so um, what team do you want a motion to approve? Yes. Brian? Uh, sure, I'll make a motion to finance committee recommend uh, article two at the special town meeting. I'll stack with that cost stamp. Okay, um, Brian? Day, aye. Chris? Aye. Larry? Aye. And Adam, aye. Okay, article number three is see if the town vote to transfer from unused balances of capital projects identified below the sum of uh, $96,000 for capital projects stated below and anything incidental or related thereto, including but not limited to purchase and installation of furniture, equipment, supplies, or any tax action thereto. Um, so basically there's a list of um, items here that um, we funded previously and um, we don't need the money um, for these projects anymore. So we're saying to uh, transfer this total of 96,200 and transfer for unused funds to the following fiscal 22 capital projects. Fire, a command vehicle replacement of $65,000, a public works uh, behind air compressor of $30,000 and public works used cap and, and chassis with equipment of $1,200, for a total of $96,200. Uh, I'd say this looks straightforward, so I would make a motion to approve. I'll second. All right, um, Brian? Quick discussion. Do you have any discussion? Yeah, I just wanted to ask, uh, are any of these balances because the projects were simply deferred or did we get funding from other sources? Um, <laughs> Yes, we did. Um, the fire radio replacement of $47,000. Uh, we we, uh, we were able to get them reimbursed through uh, CARES Fund, which we at first didn't think that that was going to happen. And then the, um, the facilities, the uh, generators for the town office um, came in at $25,000 uh, under budget. So um, it was, a, I think that's both. Correct me if I'm wrong, Ari. I believe that's both the COA and the town hall generator, right? Correct. There. And the okay. others are just balances left over. Right. So there was a savings on that as well. That's good. The, the others are oh, including that one cent from the police. <laughs> <laughs> the big unfortunately, money, Larry. And unfortunately, whether the balance is one cent or a hundred thousand dollars, <laughs> we still got to close it out. Unfortunately, according to the Department of Revenue, so that's what it is. I would just like to thank Todd for turning the, the sofa upside down again to find that penny. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, All right. Um, okay, go ahead. All right, so, so we'll vote. Um, Brian? Okay, aye. Chris? Aye. Larry? Aye. And Adam, aye. Okay, uh, go into the annual town meeting. Yeah, go in there now. Okay. Hold on. I'm sorry, it's okay. Go to the beginning here. Give me a moment. Okay, go. Article number one is uh, to see if the town of vote determine the salaries of all elected officers and to raise and appropriate or transfer from available funds, such sums as money as necessary to defray town expenses fiscal year, July 21st, 2022 to June 30th, 2023 inclusive such sums to be allocated in accordance with the budget document to be presented at town meeting to make appropriation or take any action relative thereto. As the finance committee knows, you know, the budget um, booklet, uh, which was uh, presented to you, the final one was uh, given to you this past week. 
And um, during the budget process over the last at least three or four months, um, we've spent a lot of time together discussing these, uh, the budgets and uh, so forth. So um, unless uh, the finance committee has any questions, Adam, I guess you can make a motion to either approve this or delay it. Any discussion within the team? I just want to thank everybody again for all the meetings and kind of putting all that work together, um, especially for getting the full line item budget on the town's website so early. I think that's great. So appreciate the work. That's a good, good point. I'm glad you brought that up, Brian. And if anybody's interested in uh, looking at the detailed line item budget, it's out on the town website. And if you have any questions about the budget, you certainly can call the town administrator in the selectman's office or email him to ask any questions. Go ahead, Adam. All right, I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Okay, uh, Brian. Day aye. Larry. I'll stand aye. And Chris. Aye. And Adam aye. Okay. Next. Next uh, article is to see. Yes. Could I just ask, <laughs> Mr. Lynch? Can you um, just try to stick to the same vote order? So, um, because I can't see who's speaking, so that would just make it easier for me to try to do the vote right. Okay. It works. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Article two, to see if the town will vote to raise an appropriated transfer of available funds. Some as money is necessary to operate the park department for fiscal year period July 1 through 2022 to June 30th, 2023, inclusive to make appropriation and take any action relative to there too. As you know, as well as the park commission budget is in the, um, is in the booklet. And um, we've had a lot of discussion about, you know, the park commission budget. And once again, it's available online. So Adam. Uh, any discussion with the team? All right, um, motion to approve. I'll second. Okay, uh, Brian. You're on mute, Brian. Hey, I. <laughs> Chris. Hi. And Larry. I'll stand, I. And Adam, I. Okay. Article number three is to see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate transfer from available funds, such sum of money that may be necessary to operate the landfill transfer station for the fiscal period July 1, 2022 to July 30th, 2023, inclusive to make uh, appropriation or take any action relative thereto. Once again, as the Finance Committee knows, it's, uh, it's in, the, in the booklet and has been discussed uh, previously at previous meetings. Adam? Any discussion within the team? Uh, motion to approve. Motion. Any second, Larry? Second. Second. All right, uh, Brian. Hey, aye. Chris. Aye. Larry. Costan. Aye. And Adam. Aye. Um, there's somebody here in the background that doesn't have their mute on. Would you please uh, mute your, uh, your your computer, please, so we don't hear all that background notice? Thank you. Um, article number four is to see if the town will vote and raise an appropriate transfer available funds, borrow otherwise, provide a sum of money for the capital improvements and equipment and all costs incidental or related thereto, and to authorize the town officials to take any action and execute all documents that may be necessary to effectuate the purpose of this vote or take any action thereto. So I'm going to read each one here because they're coming from different Funding sources. So number one, line number one is, um, would you move up the, uh, Ari? Up, please. Thank you. All right, um, number one, technology. Technology systems improvements, uh, $75,000, and that's coming from free cash. Uh, police cruises is $100,000, that's coming from free cash. Uh, ladder truck, 1.4 million. That's going to be a lease purchase. Uh, road, road improvements of $375,000 coming from free cash. A front end loader with equipment of $215,000 is free cash. Uh, crack seal and sealed coat parking lot, $25,000. Um, solid waste and coming from retained earnings from the transfer station. 
preliminary design and senior center addition of $40,000 coming from the Le, uh, LeBaron mitigation. Uh, the John Pond uh, Park building demolition, $50,000 is gonna come from free cash. Replacement of Clear Pond Park Guard Shack, $25,000 is gonna come from Park retained earnings. Anybody got any questions? I've got two if I may. Um, not necessarily questions, but the ladder truck, could someone please remind me the, the procedure on this since the lease purchase, obviously these things are typically built to spec, so we might not see it for a while. When does the actual payment process begin? Payment is due upon delivery. Um, and then the financing kicks in then as well. Okay. So um, it would be uh, in the lease purchase arrangement, um, probably the first payments wouldn't occur until about at this it all depends on delivery, but probably at least a year and a half after uh, town meeting. Okay, thank you. And my second question was LeBaron mitigation. What What's the total balance on that that's available? This goes um, back a long ways. Yeah. Okay, so um, go ahead. Do you want to do it or go ahead? Uh, I, I believe we're up to about 90,000 now. So the, um, the, the 40,000 40, comes out of that. And is there any and, time on that or where it must be used by or? No. Okay. The, um, actually it's um, gonna be up to $250,000, right. Brian. Right. Yeah. Um, and as the units are being uh, developed and being occupied, that's when we get the uh, additional fee as we go along. Okay. Right. Thank you. That's all. Adam? Any more discussion? Motion to approve. Second. Mm. All right, we'll vote. Uh, Brian? Day, aye. Chris? Aye. Larry? And aye. And Adam, aye. Okay, article number five. Um, Ari, without going into my budget book, do you know what the amount is? Yeah, um, 700,000 going into stabilization. Okay, thank you. Okay, to see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate transfer of bill funds a sum of money for the purpose of adding to the stabilization pursuant to the provisions of Mass General Laws, Chapter 40, Section 5B, or take any action there too. And the amount, as Ari just pointed out, is seven hundred thousand dollars is being proposed. That brings us in compliance with town policy. Uh, anybody? Any questions? Adam, motion to approve. Second the motion. All right, we'll vote. Brian, day aye. Chris, aye. Larry, I stand aye. And Adam, aye. Okay. Article number seven to see if the town, excuse me, article Six. number six to see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate transfer available funds, a sum of money for the purpose of adding to the other post employment benefits trust uh, OPEB already taking any action there, there too. And I believe that amount is $310,000. Correct. Okay. So um, you want to explain that, Dari? Or uh, you guys all said you want to explain it to you. It has to do with post uh, yeah. post employment benefits, not non retirement post employment. So things like health insurance and um, accounting rules now require localities or employers to 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 account for the future cost um, of of, of uh, non retirement post employment costs for their for their employees. Um, we the three hundred ten thousand keeps us in compliance with our our. Um, uh, our arc or actuarial uh, required contribution. Adam? Motion to approve. I got a motion. All right, we'll vote. Brian? Day aye. Chris? Aye. Larry? Costant aye. And Adam aye. Okay. Um, Finance Committee, um, Article 7, 8, 9, and 10. Uh, the zoning articles. And as I explained earlier uh, on Thursday night, uh, 
the planning board will be holding public hearings on every one of these articles for uh, any discussion and uh, recommendations. So it's up to the um, finance committee if they want to vote on these articles or not. Um, I'm not gonna read all these articles. The first one <laughs> is um, open space development. Um, the second one is... Getting there. Thank you. <laughs> um, second one is a, a, a um, sign. sign bylaw. Okay, which is very extensive. <laughs> number nine is site plan. The number nine is uh, site plan review. And number 10 is a correction to um, an existing bylaw uh, having to do with, I believe it's boat sales, if I'm not mistaken. Right, correct. Yeah. So uh, um, I don't know what I don't want the finance committee wants to do. They want to wait. I'm gonna I'm gonna recommend that we wait till after Thursday's meeting um, and see how the, what the team thinks. Okay, I mean you can do it uh, at a separate meeting if you want to, or you can wait just before the annual town meeting. Up to you. Well, for clarification purposes, one of our options is to make a recommendation of no recommendation. Correct? We've done that. That's before. correct. You yeah. don't have to make a recommendation at all. No. That's correct. Thank you, Brian. So, you know, Adam, I'm totally fine with that idea. Um, if, if the team also feels that these are um, articles that we don't have a financial opinion yeah. on. I, I second that, that motion. <laughs> <laughs> we probably have to go through these one at a time. So is that what you guys want to do is not make a recommendation? I mean, yeah. Larry, okay. Chris, any, any opinions? Yeah, I mean, there's. It seems like there's not a lot of financial. Um, uh, I, I I read I read these and it's exhausting, but uh, it didn't seem like there was a lot of financial weight in, in any of these, uh, other than maybe some permitting fees. But um, I, I don't see that we need to really make a, uh, a recommendation on this, in my opinion. But okay. I, I I can I concur with that. Okay, so uh, going back to Article 7, um, the, Adam, um, the Finance Committee wants to Reco not uh, recommend no recommendation. Okay. <laughs> you want to vote on that? Or you want to? Got a second from Brian. So, um, Brian? Okay. Aye. Chris? Okay. Aye. Art article number. Larry. Excuse me. Call stand, aye. And Adam, aye. Okay, article number eight. You want to do the same thing, Adam? Yeah, I recommend no recommendation. Okay. Second the motion. All right, Brian. Okay, aye. Uh, Chris. Aye. Larry. I'll stand aye. And Adam, aye. Okay, article number nine. Recommend no recommendation. Second. Uh, Brian? Yeah, aye. Chris? Aye. Larry? I stand aye. And Adam, aye. Uh, we're at 10 now. Yeah. yeah I, um, I, let me see. I, I don't think, um, it doesn't say the article number, Tracy, on this. And I, I'm sorry, it does. Excuse me, I'm corrected. All right, you all set, guys? Uh, <laughs> article 10, right? And yep. Article yeah. 10, uh, recommend no recommendation. Second the motion. Uh, Brian? Day aye. Chris? Aye. Larry? Call stand aye. And Adam, aye. Okay, um, article number seven, um, excuse me, article number 11 um, is uh, we just uh, voted to uh, put that, you know, on the warrant. And um, it has to do with the uh, uh, proposed uh, purchase of the uh, Lakeville Country Club. So once again, maybe the finance committee doesn't have all the necessary information they'd like at this point. 
and may not want to make a recommendation, uh, it's up to you. Uh, but this does include a substantial amount of money. So um, it's up to you guys what you want to do. You want to wait? Uh, I would recommend waiting. I don't think I've had enough information myself, but I'll, I'll let the team um, chime in. I prefer to wait as well. Um, I did have one question, and that was whether or not, since last week's informational, um, if we've determined if the warrant as written allows the ballot vote to be the individual purchase and sales or lumped together. Um, depends upon what happens at town meeting, Brian. It can be, well, well right now it's all one. If somebody amends it to change it, then we'll, we'll, we'll do that. So they could be combined in one article? Yes. Yeah. The, the um, just for context, the, um, they're not equal in size. Right. One is much larger than the other. And the, the, the smaller one probably is determinative in terms of the project. So um, it's really the 61B that's the, the, you know, the, the big kahuna on this. Yeah, understood. But I think the smaller PNS is around 900,000 or so. So yes. depending on what the townsfolk want to do, it's still a sizable amount of money. Okay. There's quite, I just had a question. This is, is this going to require a two and a half override to do it? It is. It is. And it's, it's for the, uh, the Larry, the, um, if you look at uh, down uh, section B of the, uh, of the article, it, it notes the passage of a prop two and a half ballot question. Okay, what I would suggest um, finance committee if you haven't um, seen the informational meeting that the joint meeting between the planning board, open space conservation, the board of selectmen on April 20th, um, I would suggest that you review that. I would also encourage the townspeople uh, to review that meeting because there was a lot of information and discussion about this purchase. And I think it's important to understand some of those things before you get to town meeting. So um, I would recommend that uh, people do that. I would also know, Mr. Chairman, that we're learning new things about this transaction all the time, um, which, I'm, which we're endeavoring to keep the board aware of and let, let the public know once, once we have that information as well. Okay, um, I guess we're all set uh, for the Finance Committee. Um, I guess the Finance Committee can adjourn if you want, or you can stay on and listen, okay. whatever you want to do. One, one small ask, if we may, um, yeah. we just personally, I don't know if the whole board wants it, but Ari, would it be reasonable to ask as new information comes in, you send that our way as well. So we don't have to go looking for it. Absolutely, right, right now they're more, they're, um, what I know is what I talked about um, earlier during discussion, we, we have a lot of known unknowns. Um, we know that there's a covenant out there on the property that, involve, that requires it to operate as a golf course. Um, we also know that we also discovered that there's language in the PNS um, regarding uh, personal and real property on the site which doesn't convey um, with, the, with the sale. So we're not certain what we get with the purchase. Um, then, you know, and then in terms of the other unknowns, we don't, really don't know. You know, there's a lot of questions about operating costs and usage and so forth and so on that we just need to identify. So it's, it's just a lot of it, Brian's questions. Um, in the presentation that we're gonna put together for a town meeting, we'll um, you know, note the things we know, what we don't know. Um, we'll talk, there was a lot of talk about debt service um, the other day as well. And um, we're preparing analysis on that that we'll be including, um, and you know, in terms of what the, you know, what what, what the changes in debt service look like over time, both with and without this, you know, uh, an LCC purchase, and um, we'll, um, we'll we'll also talk about the work we've done so far, trying to look into what grants could be available. Unfortunately, it's not great news, but we'll we'll do what we'll, we'll provide what we can. So one key point there you mentioned was the personal real property. So theoretically, if the town were to move forward and said, we'll operate as a golf course for now, there might be no equipment to operate as a golf course. That appears to be what we're seeing. It appears that there'd have to be another a separate negotiation with the seller. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. All right, uh, motion to adjourn the finance committee meeting. Do we need to vote on the on eleven? Do we already do that? Or? Oh, so you, you decided. Do we have just? Do we have? Do we have to vote to put it off, or just let it go? You'll have to vote at it sometime, Larry.
but not you don't want uh, according to the chairman he doesn't want to do it tonight no no i, I understood that i didn't know if we had to acknowledge it or not that's all yeah. um, all right thank you do we have a motion to adjourn uh, i'll second adam's motion as of 7 30. okay um brian day i chris i larry and Adam, I. Okay. Thank you. Thank everybody. you. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thanks. Thanks, Katie. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, geez, you forgot to ask the finance committee if they who's going to attend the meeting with the uh, Tom I moderator. I assume it would be Adam. Since okay. He's, All right. He's, he's effectively acting as chair. Yeah. Okay. Adam's Adam's still there. Anyhow, he just I'm oh, still here. Right. Yep. Adam, Adam, what we do every year is we have a, a meeting with the town moderator, uh, town council, town administrator, chairman of the board of selectmen, chairman of the finance committee um, to go over the motions for town meeting, okay, to make sure okay. that so everybody understands all of that. And Ari is proposing, I think, Wednesday yeah. the, at 10 o'clock now, at 10 o'clock, right, Ari? Yeah, right now is what it looks like, yeah. And if that doesn't work for you, Adam, we'll have to change it, but uh, we'll see if we can work around that. Uh, Wednesday the 27th at 10, 10 a.m.? Yeah. By Zoom, by Zoom. Yeah, I can do that. Okay, good, great. Yep. Okay, so we're all set. Thank you, Adam. Yeah, no so, problem. All right, thank you. Okay. Good night again. Good night again. <laughs> you sure we can hang up now? Yeah, you can, yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, so we're going to go, since we have almost 15 minutes, um, we're going to go to talk number eight uh, to talk about the, um, uh, to discuss the possible vote to renew the following licenses. Uh, Anthony and Dorita Morris, 33 Merrick Street, auctioneer, junk, junk dealer and junk collector licenses. Hugh Judy Roberts, 2201 County Street, junk dealer, junk collector of licenses. Robin Marcus and Donald Bernier of 61 um, Rhode Island Road, uh, junk dealer, junk collector license, and Christine Ann Goyette of uh, 330 Bedford Street, junk dealer uh, and junk collector. So let's get that stuff out. So every, every year, um, these properties are reviewed and uh, to make sure that they comply. And um, you have, as you know, a letter from the uh, zoning enforcement officer, you know, um, giving his recommendation as to if they're inspecting the sites and um, saying whether we should redo it or not. So let's start with the uh, first one on his list, which is uh, Anthony and Dorita Morris of 33 Merricks. Um, while this property is in with residential district and has operated as an auction house for decades, the owners have shown significant effort to organize storage and materials and clean up the uh, debris. Removal of the associated license is recommended. <clears throat> um, if the board remembers, um, last year, I went and inspected the properties as well. And there was a number of uh, unregistered vehicles on the property. And um, there was a lot of um, um, stuff and storage and materials that was stored, you know, in the back part of the building on the property. And um, I, my recommendation is, in, unless the uh, board members have done this, have inspected the property as well, I would recommend that we renew this license with 90 days and have it reinspected in 90 days because I don't think it's been cleaned up like it should be cleaned up. And that's my personal opinion. Any of the board members want to say anything? Muted, no. Pardon me? Sorry, I should just leave it off. Um, 
you know, going by, um, you know, what Nate, um, our zoning enforcement officer recommended, um, that they have made significant efforts. Um, and I'm assuming that they will continue to do so with monitoring. Um, so I, I guess, so we'll have to revisit in 90 days. Is that what you're saying, Mr. Chairman? That's what I'm proposing, yes. Okay, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm good with that too. Uh, Leah? Yeah, I know that we had worked on some of these before. So I think at this point, I'd be happy to make a motion that we approve Anthony and Dorita Morris's 33 Myrick Street renewal for 90 days. The class two business license. So that's what we can do that, right? It's a junk license, yeah. Yeah, junk license. Yeah. Sure. And I'll, I'll second. And what, are, what would be the dates on that from, from tonight's uh, tomorrow till 90 days from tomorrow? Was that how it would work? The effective date, I believe, Tracy, is May 1st, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, I'm yes. sorry. That's okay. okay. 90 days from May 1st. Okay. So Any we'll have to, I'm sorry. Go ahead. So we'll have to have a reinspection, have the uh, NATO reinspection, and get back with a report um, probably in July. Yeah. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Carboni, aye. Median, aye. The camera, aye. Next is Hugh and uh, Judy Rogers. Uh, it's called Dad, Dad's Treasurers to One County Street. The property is within the business district and renewable associated license. And basically there's nothing on the outside of the buildings. It's all in the inside of a building. So, um, and it's recommended by the uh, zoning enforcement officer. So I'll entertain a motion to approve this license. So moved. Uh, May 1st, excuse me, I say. Uh, May 1st through uh, April 30th of 2023. Any discussion? All those in favor? Carboni, aye. Uh, me, aye. Baby and I. Uh, La camera, aye. Okay, next one is uh, Robin and Marvin Marcus and Donald Bernier of 61 Rhode Island Road. This property is within the residential district. And material storage on on site appears to surpass what is reasonably expected on the property of this nature. And I have requested additional resources to evaluate the current property, and uh, will continue to monitor. Renewal of uh, low uh, associated license is not recommended at this time. Um, the board we had the same discussion last year about this time, and uh, they have uh, probably ten or twelve unregistered vehicles besides all kinds of drunk and junk and materials and so forth. And, um, the zoning enforcement office is not recommending to um, approve this uh, renewal. So I'll entertain a motion not to renew this uh, junk deals license for uh, Robert Marcus and, and uh, Donald Bernier at 61 Rhode Island Road. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Um. Yeah, I think sometimes we should, we need to crack down. Like we said, we uh, tried to work on this one last year. Um, so I think at this point, we should just hopefully let them work with Nate on, on the building commissioner and the zoning, who, who's also the zoning enforcement person. And, you know, um, I've had friends myself who've had, cars that you know they feel are valuable but you know don't want to part with it either so it could be it could be something like that so i i feel like that this is a good move that we make it make this time um Lear, it's not just cars it's no i know all kinds of other stuff too yeah um, yeah no i know so, and sometimes it just gets out of control too so you know we we've given the license in the past so i feel like we have some responsibility to help clean up on on the other end so okay lorraine anything no thank you nope all, all, all those in favor carboni aye uh baby and i uh look at my eye um the next one is uh christine and goyette at 330 bedford street this the property is within the business district and if renewal for associated license is recommended 
Um, this is a um, antique store that's uh, located at the um, 330 Bedford Street, uh, the Palmer Savis Sav Sav Plaza there. So it's recommended. So I entertain a motion to approve this uh, John Taylor's license permit. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Carboni, aye. Baby and I. Okay, we got that one done. Where are we here? All right, we got uh, five minutes here. We, so we got two hearings left, uh, which is 7.45 and 8 p.m. Um, does anybody, has anybody got any new business? I'll bring that up. Um, we could do um, the uh, interim director of the COA. Oh, we already did that, Ari. We were, we we're going to do the appointment in, in during new business because uh, you have an action item in your on your agenda. Okay, I put that aside. I'm sorry. So I was trying to follow procedure, and the only reason I'm doing it this way is because you don't have another meeting until the 16th, and I want to get things together okay, in that, uh, that part. I'll, I'll send a motion to appoint. Are we going to put a time frame on, or are we just going to leave it open for now? I'm sorry, Rich. I can't hear you. Can't hear you at all, Rich. Oops, my That's paper better. is covering the microphone. Yeah. Um, is it is it going to be for a period of time or is it going to be? Six, yeah, I, I would respectfully request point uh, Lori Faye's interim um, as interim director of the Council on Aging uh, for a period um, of six months, not to exceed six months, um, at the uh, starting rate for um, that position. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Did you so move that, Lori? No, I, I lost Ari at six, um, but not a period not to exceed six months. And and what was the, the last part? I had the starting rate for the position, which I believe is about sixty. And like I could, I can tell you exactly in a moment. I should have had that with me, and I don't. I apologize. Yeah, I had that as a question here. Yeah, yeah, I, I know. Um, I want to say it was like six. I'm going to have it to you in one second. Okay. Sixty-six five ninety-three. And when would that begin? Um, with um, uh, Kelly's departure. So after so after May, her last days. Yeah, yeah. So she has May a week 14th. of vacation in there too, and I don't want to strain the budget. So we'll probably have a week there where uh, you know separate between. Um, I also um, just want to keep the, the board advised. Uh, it may become necessary to bring on temporary help in some form to assist with the front counter because two people can't do the work of three, and as you know, the summer is a very busy time for them. Okay, does, uh, did somebody make that motion yet or? All right, so I, I guess I'll make a motion that we um, appoint Laurie Fahey as the interim council on aging director um, beginning shortly after uh, Kelly's departure of May 14th for a period not to exceed six months. Um, and at the rate of what the current position is for 66,593. Yeah. And if for whatever, I'm sorry, if for whatever reason we um, uh, end up in a situation where we're not able to recruit or we have some issues, you know, I'll be, of course, we'll come back to the board and let you know. And we'll, we'll discuss from there, but the six any months further, buys us some time. Any further discussion? Um, I just wanted to mention that um, I think it's a good, I know the COA is busy over the summer, but from a you know, management standpoint, um, the budget, which is a big part of the director's position, um, will be done. So, you know, it'll give um, it'll give her time to acclimate to uh, to that position. Even though, but um, doesn't Devony, our floater, Devony, float over there too? So, yes. okay. she's also she's also the, the chair of the COA too. So, I think yeah. that okay. So okay. she's, been, she's been very helpful with thinking out the transition. Okay. okay any further? Oh, excuse me. Any further discussion? 
All those in favor? Arvoni, aye. Fabian, aye. The camera, aye. Thank you. Okay. Um, it's 7.45, and um, you got to get out that thing. Excuse me. Uh, Okay, um, pursuant to chapter 140, section 5859 of the Massachusetts Journal of Laws, Select Board will conduct a public hearing on the application of the estate of Salvatore, I don't know his name right? Ticinati. Ticinati, thank you. Um, DBA SC Auto for Class Two Motor Vehicle Sales License to exercise at 19 South Kingman Street, Lakeville, Mass on April 25th at uh, 2025 at 7.45 p.m. In accordance with the provisions allowed by chapter 20 of the acts of 2021, the April 25th public meeting of Lakeville will be held remotely. However, to review this meeting, you can go to lakecam.com uh, to review this meeting and you do not need a Facebook page. Okay, so um, I guess the first thing we need to do is um, go to um, open the hearing. Um, I make a motion that we open the hearing for an application for a class two motor vehicle sales license for the estate of Salvatore Cuccinati for 19 South Kingman Street, Lakeville, Mass. Second. Okay, so the hearing is open. Um, is there anybody else that is going to be speaking? And would you please state your name and your address, please? Hi, uh, greetings. It's a, a great honor to meet you guys. Um, my name is Andrea Cucinati. I am the representative of the estate of Salvatore Cucinati, and he is my father. Okay, thank you. Um, All right, so I, I think there's a, a few things that, um, you know, we received from the um, um, zoning uh, uh, officer. Um, the first thing is, is that um, these licenses cannot be transferred to another party, okay? Um, so we have a situation here where he passed away uh, I guess, I don't know, sometime in the last year, I believe. The um, license expired and the license cannot be transferred to anybody else. And so the situation is that if there was gonna be a new license that was gonna be issued, um, unfortunately, uh, we cannot put, have a license in the estate of uh, him as well. So, we also, according to the um, zoning enforcement officer, that since the bylaw changed, um, we cannot as well approve a uh, class two license um, on a residential property. So um, it's unfortunate um, that we can't do that, but uh, um, that's what it is. That's the way it is. So I don't know what the board is going to want to discuss about this, um, but this is not allowed in a residential area. If I can, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chairman. Yep. When did the, uh, I don't know when the bylaw changed, but um, I had asked the town administrator um, to let us know exactly how, how many years um, this license had been approved um, at this address? Um, the, the zoning bylaw was changed. Um, oh, there it is. I'm sorry. It was June okay. um, 2018. Yeah. Um, so it was in effect as of June um, 2008, uh, May 2008, ah, April 2018. Um, and it looks like the previous board had approved it uh, December 28, 2020. So it was um, also in a residential um, zone and it was approved. Um, it, was, it was grandfathered at that time, Lorraine. Okay, only because it was under um, Salvatore's Correct. name. But because right. this is a new license, we can't follow the same 
grandfather rules. Is that what you're saying? That's correct. May I speak to the board? Sure. Thank you so much. I appreciate um, your time. Um, my father actually has had a, a business here since uh, the mid nineties. I mean, he had Majestic Auto Wholesale and this has been a family business. He graduated as a mechanic. I grew up with him working on cars. Do I want to complete the business the way it was? No, but this is a legacy. And under the advice of the estate's attorney, he told me to continue to try to function this business under his estate because there was still inventory. I would like to continue a small boutique business. I understand if that's no longer grandfathered, but at this time, I'm kind of at a place trying to clean up what I was left, which is a gift but a lot to deal with. You know, I'm a realtor. I've lived in Georgia 25 years and got my realtor's license and here in September, right before he died and trying to work business with him. And, you know, it's just been a huge shock to every part of us. Um, but we love it here, my fiance and I, and we're looking forward to serving the community. And we would really like the ability to, to keep it on, you know, the, the little, you know, small boutique and at least be able to fulfill the estate. Um, just a clarification, we're not talking about a boutique here. We're talking about a class two uh, licensed dealer's yes, license. Yes, sir. I understand. But I mean more of a boutique dealership because this is my job, but I'm not going to be like working on cars or, or doing like what my dad did. Um, but I love cars. I would like to be able to go to auctions and, and maybe buy and sell them on that kind of level, as opposed to being like, you know, it's my full-time job, but um, it's not um, like I'm going to have cars everywhere. I don't want that. You know, I understand the value of property and respect to neighbors. Um and it's all just been very hard because I did not know that the license expired because he had passed. Mm. And the, uh, Andrea, I wanted to say my condolences. Um, I should have said that when we first um, opened the, the hearing, but my condolences for the loss of your father. Thank you so much. Um, did your father have a dealer's license? Yes, he had a dealer's license here since 1996. I was able to um, um, get the, the business certificate renewed. Unfortunately, because of planning a funeral, I missed the mail about renewing his license for the dealership. And, um, you know, I was told by other people um, through the town that typically they would renew um, even after an expiration date, but it's complicated because of the estate. My lawyer told me to continue with the proceeding for the estate because of what inventory is left. Um, Chair? Mr. Chair? Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's Leah. Um, I, I just have um, a, a question. So you're saying the estate, is the estate still in probate? I guess I'm not real sure. It is not. I am the representative of the estate. I am the heiress of the estate. I, I mean, I'm, and I'm working, you know, diligently with my attorney to figure everything out, to, to clear the property, to, you know, beautify our neighborhood. Like we, we live here and we love it here now, you know, it wasn't our plan, but he left us this gift and, and we're excited to be part of the community um, but I would just really appreciate it if you would give the, the time to consider, you know, allowing me to fulfill at least the last part of the estate if I was not able to renew or do my own um, dealership license. I'm sorry for my emotion. Uh, there's, there's two pieces to this, okay? One is the permit from the town for the class two license. And then there's a dealer's license from the registry. You realize that, right? Yes, sir, I do. Okay, so you don't have a dealer's license either, the registry. 
Uh, no, unfortunately, because of the paperwork shuffle after me missing the, you know, after dad passed, I didn't know about the renewal and I kept contacting the board office trying to figure a way to do so, yet it got lost in the shuffle and I was not able to renew the dealer plate um, for it, which expired. Um, and I'm trying to do everything, you know, by the book. Like I want this right. This is our life. And um, you, you do know the dealer's license. The dealer's plates and license can't be renewed in his name. I do understand that. And I'm okay. fully prepared to apply for a dealer plate license for me. Like I, I can totally do that. Um, but again, my attorney had told me to try to get the grace of the board to renew it under the estate or give me that leniency to be able to figure out this inventory while I'm clearing and cleaning property. Um, I assume you do realize that because it's an estate, then you can sell those vehicles if you want. Without without a uh, dealer's license, so the only the thing that I mean, excuse me, a class two license, which would be, you know, to buy and sell, you know, vehicles. Um, we cannot issue a class two license under the estate. We just can't do that. And second of all, it's not allowed under the zoning bylaws now, and it's not grandfathered. So I don't know what the board wants to do. It's up to the board. Um, I, I actually have legal questions on um, the town's responsibility. I, I mean, I would uh, make a motion that we um, postpone the hearing. Can we postpone this hearing and close it out at a different time? Um, I have some questions from just our own legal responsibility that I think town council should probably answer for us. Specifically? Um, do we have um, information that, the, that, it, that it's gone through probate? That's none of our business, Leah. Well, I mean, if, if it hasn't, then I wouldn't feel comfortable making any kind of a granting any kind of a license because if probate hasn't been then anyone could come forward and say there's a debt on the estate so um because right now i'm inclined to not not approve it the way it's being presented for several reasons so Well, if the board wants to continue the hearing to a later date, that's up to you guys. I just think we need specific questions as to what we need. I mean, it, it, we definitely cannot not issue this license in an estate. Mr. Chairman, if I may, um, Ms. Cucinati, when you were just mentioning that um, you were looking into, um, was it the license, the deal of license? And you said that you had contacted the board. Was it the board's office? Did you mean the, the select board's office, or were you talking about the registry of motor vehicle via, registry of motor vehicles office? Uh, initially, my first correspondence was with Miss uh, Tracy Craig McGee, um, and that was um, my papers here. I'm so sorry, I've ever written down. My first correspondence with her was in February, and she said that she was going to seek guidance from other people in the board on what to do with that. And I waited, and then so that was 2.22. Um, I actually then took the time to contact Mr. Darling um, because of the condition of the property that I inherited. Um, and, and he said, you know, do what you're supposed to do. Um, and my lawyer advised me to continue to try to pursue this under the estate as the representative of the estate um, to continue a business under SC Auto. On March 14th, 
Um, I again contacted Miss Craig and she said she sent a memo to Mr. Darling, yet there had not been um, any correspondence again for Mr. Darling. On 322, uh, I called Miss Craig again. She said that she sent a memo to Mr. Darling, but he's very busy and he won't be by tomorrow because she forgot she spoke to me the previous Monday. Um, and then this most recent time is when she contacted me on 419 um, about the meeting, which I'm so grateful to be present here. Um, we've been doing our best diligence to be in compliance <clears throat> and, and, and take over so much. Um, you know, I also inherited two properties in uh, rental properties in New Bedford. So um, we're here now and, and we love it here, but, you know, I want, I, I just, SC Auto has been a family thing for so many years. And hmm. Mr. Chairman, if I may, I just, um, so I wanted to go back to February for a moment. Um, uh, Ari and Tracy, maybe you can answer, um, what research did we conduct at that time? Because I'm just concerned, you know, it's, it's April now, the end of April. And if this came in back in February, I'm just curious as to what has transpired at that point. What, what do we need to look into? Maybe that might answer some of our, our uh, I'll let Tracy, legal questions. I'll let Tracy tell me, but my, my, as my recollection, um, we knew pretty clearly what the situation was as far as the status of the license and the status of the estate. Um, the question was the condition of the, of the, of the, uh, um, uh, so if, if I may, Mr. Chair, um, as the chair, Lorraine, I wasn't comfortable putting it on an agenda, even though it had come in, because um, there was um, some issues in the past with Mr. Cucinati about the property um, having collected a lot of extra um, cars. There were, um, I believe, part of it was there were several unregistered cars. Um, also, um, when the request first came in, it was for a renewal, but at that point, I didn't feel it was appropriate because Mr. Cucinati himself had passed away. So I don't know how we renew a license for someone who has passed away. Um, at some point, I think, um, uh, Ms. Cucinati had told us that it was in court and I didn't feel like it was our responsibility to um, to hand out a license if a probate decision was going to go in a different way, if other creditors were going to come forward. So I just never felt like I had enough information to add it to an agenda. So um, that's why it's been uh, hovering here. Um, and I, I still feel like the same, the same scenario right now where um, I have a question as to why we need to give a license if it's going to be just um, Ms. Cucinati selling off the inventory. I didn't think a license was necessary for that. And in my opinion, it's a new, you know, it's a new applicant and um, that's kind of my question for the legal folks is, is, is it, you know, what, what we, uh, what we, if we're crossing all our I's and dotting all our T's, that's all. Well, well, it just seems that there's, it's, you know, a long time from February to now, but Mr. Mr. Chairman, if it's all right, I'd like to, you know, if it pleases the board, I'd like to read, um, Nate Darling's, um, you know, uh, memo into the record, if I can, for the hearing. You do what you want, sure. All right, so this was um, a memo from uh, our building commissioner, our zoning enforcement officer, um, Nate Darling, um, regarding 19 uh, South Kingman Street, dated April 21st, 2022. Um, as requested by your office, I have visited 19 South Kingman Street for the purposes of establishing a new class two motor vehicle license. As you may or may not be aware, the previous owner passed away late last year, which was the cause of missing the renewal deadline. As I am told, his daughter will now have to meet 
the bo uh, select board's regulations for a new license, which will be difficult, if not impossible task. Whereas the license is discretionary, it is exclusively within the select board's jurisdiction to deny or approve it. For discussion purposes, I will offer the following findings and facts. The site has seen significant improvement over the last few months and is in better condition now than at any point in recent history. The subject property is in the residential district. From a zoning perspective only, non-use of a duly permitted licensed pre-existing non-conforming use typically does not expire for a period of two years unless the intent to abandon says, uh, said use, use exists. There have been no official complaints or concerns filed with my office related to the licensed property, nor am I aware of any uh, present zoning bylaw or building code violations that may affect the issuance of this license. Should the board view this license as a renewal in light of the unfortunate circumstances or approve a new license, it would be my recommendation to condition approval to continued cleanup organization of the property and fencing improvements to better conceal the activity from public view. All right, and I believe that's the, the end of the letter here. Um, and if I can, uh, Ms. Cucinati, are you aware that um, under the, the license uh, for, uh, uh, the, for a new license, um, there are some conditions here um, under, what is it, Mass General Law, um, that says here that a license shall obtain or continue in effect a bond or equivalent proof of financial responsibility satisfactory to the municipal licensing authority in the amount of $25,000 executed by a surety company authorized by the insurance department to transact business in the Commonwealth. Were you aware of that as well? Yes, ma'am. And I had actually obtained that through Bevis Insurance Company and CNA prior to my application to get a new business certificate and renew the dealer to license. Okay, because so if, if I'm not, I mean, I might have to have some help here with the class two dealer's license. And that, if I, that's my understanding is that it's for, um, for um, service or repair. Is that my understanding? No. And actually the, the license that dad held for so long was no repairs on property, but yeah, it was class two. So he would buy them at auctions and he had mechanics that would fix them and then he would sell them for profit. Were these so, vehicles, were these vehicles um, fixed on your property? No, he had specific mechanics that he would go to, to have them fixed. Okay. okay. Hmm. Okay, I don't know what the board wants to do, but um, we cannot renew a license or a new license to an estate, period. We right, can't so do this that. Is a, right, so it would be a brand new license. Okay. So if the board wants to continue the hearing, that's up to you guys. Well, I guess that's like my one of my biggest questions here is we know what the rule is that we cannot, you know, give a license to an estate so um i i just feel like our hands are sort of tied here so the only other alternative is that um if miss cucinati withdraws this application and and then resubmits um in her name i'm guessing then you'll run into the issue of it being in a residential location but it has not been abandoned. Right. And, I mean, and from um, my perspective, Lorraine, it was a bit of a catch-22 on my end, too. I, right. I, I felt like I couldn't deny hearing, but um, but it wasn't a, um, you know, it, if, it was, um, if it was a new one, if it was new, then clearly that's not allowed. Right. But so. but again, those and, um, licenses are under our discretion. Now, Leah, I was trying to follow what you were saying. So did our town council weigh in on this um, at all? Um, not that I recall, Tracy. Um, 
I thought we received something, but I, I honestly can't remember um, because I, I had a question, you know, whether we can give a license, which to an estate, I, that's just something that I've never really come across before. So, um, Okay, um, Ms. Cucinati, is this something that you would be willing to put in your name if we, if you were to withdraw this and put it and return it into your name? Absolutely. Um, the right. other, you know, the other issue that you know I have is as a new um, new license, I feel it's our responsibility to let all um, abutters also know what's going on. I would agree with you on that one. Yeah, I would say that I if the agree. board, if it's if it's the board's desire that we entertain a new license at this location, then um, then of course we'll notify abutters and we'll have to come and we'll come back with a new hearing. Okay, and then I would also like to just you know maybe have a couple of questions answered by town council because I would I would I would not want to support because I know it's under our um, jurisdiction of whether or not we approve the license, um, but there are some, you know, circumstances here that it was the business that had been in, you know, grandfathered in, but I understand that this is a new license. So I, I too have some questions and I'm glad that, you know, we were able to have this hearing so that I could hear um, from, from the party as well as the other board members on this. So I would be in support of, um, Uh, I mean, that's why I, you know, I just really would like to get um, just some kind of information from legal because, you know, in this application, it doesn't really specify, you know, um, what we've heard that we want to, you know, Ms. Cucinati would like to sell off whatever was there, but then she'd like to, you know, I'm not really even sure what the purpose is today. Um, you know, is it to continue this business going forward? Is it just to sell off the inventory? Again, selling off the inventory, I don't see why we need to grant a license. If everything's been through probate, then I don't see why she needs a license to do that. So I just, you know, I'm, I'm just uncomfortable. Um, giving out a new license in a residential neighborhood, which doesn't even follow zoning laws nowadays with the way the zoning has been changed. Right, and with that, I can support that, but because it was a pre-existing business and a non-conforming, well, I don't know how all the, the language is, but, uh, you know, I still have some some unanswered questions, so I'm I'm. I mean, so if I know we have a new, if it's a new license being submitted, then we're going to have to close this hearing. Is that correct? Is that procedural? We'd have to close this hearing. Well, you have determination. Vote. You have to vote on it. And what would be the purpose of continuing the hearing then? I'll play up. We're talking right now to discuss that. So we couldn't continue because if it was gonna be a new license submitted, then this hearing would need to be closed with a, with a uh, determination. If you a new license, then, then yes, you should close the consideration of this item and, um, and then you know, request a new license. A new application, I mean. Okay, we can do that, but just know, Ms. Cucinati, that it, there's no guarantees that this license would be approved. Yeah, because um, you're opening up because other people could come forward and say, we gave her a new license, which is not allowed in a residential area now. My questions, please. Um, if I'm still doing business as the business that has been here for so many years, SC Auto, um, you know, I, I am the heiress of this property and, and this business. So I, it's not that I just want to sell off what I have. It's something that I was raised with. I have an affinity for cars too. Do I want to be enveloped in it like my father was? No. But do I enjoy cars? Yes. 
but I also under the understand the property value and neighbors and all of those things. Like I said, I'm a licensed realtor in Massachusetts and Georgia, and I just want to enjoy life here and fulfill a legacy that my father left me and, and, and love Lakeville like he did for 35 plus years. I'm, you know, that's fine, but it's a new license now. If you're going to do a license and you got a problem. But I didn't abandon the business. It doesn't make any difference that the license has expired. And you can't transfer the license. That's the law. We don't make up those laws. State does. So, board, what do you want? To, we're supposed to have another hearing, board. You know, what, what do you want to do? Um. Well, I make a motion that we close the hearing anyways. And then if we have to make a decision, we make a decision, but I make a motion that we close the hearing. I think we've sort of talked about everything there is to talk about right now. You want to second that motion? Um, well, we're just closing the hearing and then we can discuss it as a board. Right, right. So I'll, okay, I'll second the motion to close the hearing. All those in favor? Carboni, aye. Fabian, aye. Uh, the camera, aye. Uh, we have another meeting here that we have to go to, so I, I don't know what the board wants to do, but we can't have another 15 minutes of discussion here. It's another public hearing. I would like to thank you all for your time today, and I wish you a well evening. Thank you. So the board's not going to uh, recommend or disapprove of this license? or. Well, I, re I re recommend that um, a continuance of um, discussion based on, um, you know, getting legal recommendations. We can't do that. You already closed the hearing. Right. You'd have to continue the hearing if you wanted to continue with discussion. Um, well, I, I don't. I don't see how we can approve this because we can't issue a license to an estate. So, I mean, that's pretty obvious to me. Um, My question is this, so I'm the representative of the estate. So I'm overseeing all of the responsibilities that my father left to me. And this is one of them. So as representative of the estate, I feel like as my attorney's guidance, he has given me the guidance to go forward with this in this fashion. I have no um, objection to doing it in my name and continuing to do business as SC Auto um, and to fulfill all of my obligations and guidelines. Um, I just wanna do everything the right way. Right. Mr. Chair? Yep. Um, the hearing's been closed, so you can't accept any more um, discussion. Thank you. That's yep. correct. Uh, if there are questions the board has specifically for town council, I'll be happy to pass those along. Otherwise, it'd probably be in order to take action on this application clear it you could vote it down or whatever and while while at while asking uh Ms. Cuccinati to apply for a new license if that's what you want to do. Thank you all so much for your time. All right. I guess I'll make a a motion that um we deny the application as presented um as it is um from an estate where we cannot issue a license for an estate. Um, second. For, for that purpose. You second the motion? Yeah. All those in favor? Carboni, aye. Uh, Fabian, aye. On the camera, aye. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Ms. Cuccinati. Thank you so much. Take care. Okay, um, we're past that date, but um, Ken, just hold on one minute. This will only take one minute, okay? Because we can't go ahead with the hearing, sir. So.
sorry. Uh, uh, so in accordance with provisions allowed by chapter 20 uh, of the Acts of 21, the, the April 25th, uh, 2022 public meeting at the Lake Hill Rent Control Board will be held remotely. However, to review this meeting, um, you can go to lakecam.com and you don't need a Facebook page. Okay, so I'll entertain a motion to open the hearing. So move. Second. Okay, uh, the situation with this um, is I'm sure you got the correspondence from uh, Tracy. We really can't go forward with this hearing because uh, we don't have the information available to um, vote to uh, set the, uh, the rate. So um, in order to do that, we have to have um, all the bills and the confirmation that the, the thing is done and the project is done and it's not. Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes. I, I drove by the site uh, just a few days ago and I can tell you it's clearly, the work clearly is not finished yet. Right, thank you. So I will entertain a motion to uh, continue this hearing until uh, May 23rd, 2022. At, so uh, excuse me, let me give okay. you a time at uh, let's say um, 7.30. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Carboni, aye. Fabian, aye. Uh, La camera, aye. Thank you. All right, so uh, all right, we took care of that one. Okay, so let's go to number 13, Ken will be happy, <laughs> which is, <laughs> Discuss a possible vote on the request from Elliott Farm LLC for one day beer and wheel, uh, wine licenses for May 1st, 2022, June 1st, 2022, July 3rd, 2022, August 7th, 2022, and August 4th, 2022. So in your packet. If I may, um, we're, if I can, I'll... we're not going to go for the March 1st. We, we don't have time to promote for that. You mean May first? I mean, I'm May first. I'm sorry. Okay. Yes. Thank you. All right. So May first is on. Okay. Okay. So um, I guess um, Ken, you can kind of tell us. Well, you know, you would like what you like to do. I know you're talking about a beer garden. Number one. Number two. I think there's a, a proposed. Uh, walkathon on June walk, walk for hunger on June 5th I believe and then each following first Sunday of the month we'll have a beer garden until uh, the October date which would be our harvest festival okay um, all of it would be to uh, for charity to help feed local families in need okay all right so um I guess the concerns we have the um, police chief on here, Matt Perkins, and um, I think Frank's on here, the highway department, you know, as well. Yes, sir. Um, so I guess I don't know if uh, you've had an opportunity to meet with the chief to review your plans yet. Uh, I believe my sister's been in touch with him. She wasn't able to make it and asked me to fill in for her. So I maybe lacking some of the details here, unfortunately. Okay, so um, as usual with events like this, the main concern is is, uh, is traffic and uh, parking, okay? So what's being proposed, Ken, for the parking and people getting from Elliott Farm to wherever? Uh, as of right now, um... I know we have discussed for the June 5th date, uh, the church and the Lions Club have both uh, agreed to let us use their parking lots. Okay. Uh, and during beer gardens, the farm stand will be closed. So the entire parking lot will be available for people who are here for the beer gardens. Okay. The question on the walk, um, is that starting at Elliot? Where is that going to, Elliot's farm, or where is that going to start? Uh, the plan would be to have them park down at the church and the Lions Club, and then we would walk, we would go from Elliot Farm around the block back to Elliot Farm. Elliot Farm, and then they would go back to their cars. Yeah, we would, would just walk, walk all the way around the block, yep. 
I guess the question for um, the chief would be um, for planning for details or whatever. How many people do you think are going to participate in this walkathon? Uh, I have no idea to be completely honest, but as we get closer to the date, we'll know how many people are signing up and we would be able to convey that information to Chief Perkins sure. as we know. Yeah. We did ask um, uh, the uh, Elliot to submit a uh, right of way form. They have done so. It's going through process right now. So we'll okay. be coming back to you with on that for that for the walkathon event. The the other thing is the uh, it's a state highway, as we know. Um, has anybody contacted the uh, state about this event? Is a I believe chief there's a form that they have to fill out. Yeah, so that's um, uh, part of the right away um, has a mass DOT notification. They would have to be notified in this okay. situation. And then it's a, it's a form. Once it's approved by the town, uh, we'll sign it and it gets submitted to the state. Okay. Anybody? Yeah, and again, we'll be doing the, we'll be providing the, uh, or requesting the approval of the, of the walkathon um, permit when, uh, once, the, once the, um, their application goes through the process. Okay, I, um, can I have one other question? Um, in looking at this is um, Harper Lane Brewery in uh, Plymouth, correct? Yes. Okay. Yep. In looking at the, um, in looking at the insurance, certificate of insurance, it says um, Harper Lane Brewery, uh, Middleborough. Uh, he is, he is switched locations. Recently, oh. is my understanding. It's it's this definitely the same guy, Mike. So the liquor licenses then would be that address and not the one that's listed here. I'm uh, I'm not sure which address would be the current one. I believe he just recently moved to Middleborough. Okay, because um, Tracy put up the uh, drew up the uh, liquor licenses and it's for 127 Camelot Drive in Plymouth. Do we need mm -hmm. to change that? I would have to touch base with Mike. I okay. That's sure. very that's very important because this, this liquor license has to be posted at your site. So okay. Um, so we need to get that clarified for Tracy. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to clarify clarify that for you this evening. I'm sorry, Mr. Oh. Chair. Yeah. These liquor licenses come directly from the ABCC. These are, these are state licenses, not our licenses. So I, I don't know um, where the Plymouth versus Middleborough, um, you know, perhaps they have an office in Middleborough, but their plant is in Plymouth, but um, I don't know anything about these because these are state licenses. Okay, so did you submit them to the state for 127 Camelot Drive? No, we, we are not involved in this. These come directly from the ABCC. They don't apply to the town on these. These are state licenses. So somebody must apply to the state then. Yes, they, they go directly to the ABCC for these licenses. So Harbor, right. Harbor Lane Brewery did that? Yes. yes. Okay. All right. Uh, that needs to be clarified. Um, so. Um, I guess if the board wants to um, approve um, the licenses and um, do you want to include any conditions as far as the license is concerned? Um, could I ask a question, Mr. Chair? Yep. Um, so Chief Perkins, I know that I had spoken to you after the even maybe during the fall festival that um, the farm stand had. And I had received three phone calls of not complaints, but concerns that folks were concerned about all the traffic. Um, yes. And I think you and I, uh, and perhaps the town administrator at that time had said um, one of the um, things we could do was require more details. Have you given that any thought? Um, yes, and I think they did, um, Elliot's farm did a, you know, they prepared for that event. They hired a detail to assist um, with traffic 
Uh, unfortunately, um, they had a parking they had a parking problem, but they did have a parking plan to have everybody park down at the Nazarene and then have people park at the Lions Club, and they were going to shuttle them up. The problem arose because there were so many people that attended, and people were just parking in the breakdown lane. So um, that's that's what the problem with traffic was. I had one person, uh, one officer there working the detail just to do traffic, and he was just getting people across the street the whole time. Um, so could I have used two more people for that detail because of the size of it? Yes, but it was, we didn't expect the turnout. I don't believe Elliot Farm expected that kind of turnout. We had, we had and, no idea we were gonna get that kind of turnout. And, and, and trust me, I, I love that folks turned out for that. I mean, we're always talking about community involvement and supporting local business. So um, it was very refreshing to me that so many folks turned out and I know folks love the farm stand. Um, but, you know, it is our responsibility as the select board to try to make these events as safe as possible. So I, I guess I would like to, I don't know, I don't, I, I don't know how you do your chief thing when you're figuring out how many details, but I guess I'd like to err on the side of caution and perhaps I'd rather have too many details show up and have to go home than not enough. And I, I don't know how we get to that, not knowing how many people will come. My sense is that if this is going to be a repeated thing that it, um, with a beer garden, that it won't be as popular as let's say a big festival, which implies bring your kids and your grandparents and, you know, but um, I don't know if we can approve the first one and then as long as everything goes well make it subject to approving the rest as long as everything turns out well um but you know like i said if my phone doesn't ring i use my common sense but when my phone rings and people weren't complaining they were just they were just being concerned so i i have to keep that in mind when i try to make these decisions so I, I don't know how many is enough details. Well, the first one is kind of unique because that's the uh, the walkathon, okay? And I, yeah. I think what'll happen, correct me if I'm wrong, Ken, that um, you have people submit applications and so forth. So there must be a closing date. That says, yes, yeah, know. yeah. We'll, we'll have a pretty good, uh, I'm not sure when the closing date is, at, is exactly, but we will have a very good idea of how many people are gonna be walking that day prior to the date of the event. Okay. So that he can get that to the chief leader and uh, the chief can say, okay, he's having 500 people, whatever it is. Um, and then he has to, you know, see what yeah, needs to be done. And as many, whatever Chief Perkins recommends for details, obviously that's, right. that's what we'll do. Then the individual bear gardens, um, you know, was the same situation that, you know, he certainly doesn't know how many people are gonna come you know, to the beer garden and on the July 3rd, August 7th and 4th. So I guess maybe the first one, the chief's gonna have to um, put more details to figure out, you know, what it's gonna be like, because that happens to be July 4th weekend too. Um, but anyway, so I think you need to work with the chief and try to come up with uh, some estimates. Mr. Chairman, if I may. Um, Ken, so we, so June, so obviously May 1st is out because we don't have enough time. So that, that'll just have to come off this um, request. Mm -hmm. So June 5th, um, we have the walkathon and then you have three other dates that you yes. want the fair garden. Were you planning other events um, at the, for those other dates as well? No, just beer gardens up until, um, I don't know if we've requested the October date yet, but we are planning on having a harvest festival in October. Okay. Okay. So, so between the Walk for Hunger and the Harvest Festival, it would just be a beer garden once a month. Okay. And the beer gardens would be um, from 5 to 8 p.m.? Yes. Okay. Um, help me out here, people. <clears throat> Lighting, um, daylight. At 8 p.m. on a during the summer, I'm just, just looking still light. Like, okay, so visibility should be um, still. We there. planned it. We planned around daylight hours. Okay. All right. Well, and I think Ken, that's all I had. 
Thank you. Ken, correct me if I'm wrong. I think you said the farm was going to be closed at five o'clock each day. Yeah, on the on the days we have beer gardens, we're going to close the farm stand at five. Okay, thank you. Okay, so um, what would the board like to do? I entertain a motion to approve the uh, the beer and wine one day beer and wine license for June fifth, July third, August seventh, uh, September fourth. So moved. Last <clears throat> second that motion. Any discussion? The only discussion was we just want to make sure that this license is correct, Ken. Okay. You know, just uh, work with Tracy and get it verified, and then you're probably going to have to call the, or uh, actually not you, the um, Hopper Lane Brewery will have to call. Him. Okay. Okay. I'll reach out to Mike tomorrow and have him uh, make sure okay. everything's on the up and up. All righty. All those in favor? Carboni, aye. A, B, and I. The camera, aye. Thank you. Thanks, Ken. Thank you all very much. You have a good Thanks. night. You too. Okay. Uh, the last poor Mark Resnick had to hang around for all this time. <laughs> okay. Um, we're going to discuss the uh, site plan for uh, 156 um, uh, Rhode Island Road. Mark, do you want to give us an overview first or? Sure. Uh, well, 156 Rhode Island Road is at the corner of Crooked Lane. And currently, there's a small garage building there, and the site is licensed for a landscaping business. Uh, he screens loam and sells other materials. Uh, site plan has been submitted to add a second building on the site, which would be significantly larger. That would have... Um, he would locate his business into uh, the end of that new building. Uh, the existing building would become storage and he would also have additional um, contractor bays for rent to other uh, tradespeople um, in the area. And um, so that has been submitted and uh, passed around to the other boards for, um, for comment, including the uh, Board of Select, here's the Select Board. Okay. Um, I have a lot of questions. I know you sent us a letter, you know, about the um, site plan, and there's a lot of issues, you know, yes. with, with the site plan as well that need to be addressed. Yes. Um, I've, I've, oh, excuse me, Mr. Chairman. I, I, I did meet. Um, with the uh, engineer and the applicant, and we reviewed the plans uh, and, and went through all the items in the comment letter. And so they will be submitting uh, tomorrow some revised drawings um, for the planning board's uh, meeting on Thursday. Okay. Um, initially, they went to the Zoning Board of Appeals uh, to get a special special permit to sell landscape products for retail sale on the property location. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's all they would, that's all they were allowed to do. And um, they are running uh, multiple businesses out of there. Um, they're running a plumbing and heating business. They're running a trucking business. Um, they're, they're screening um, all of a sudden this uh, big, I don't know what it's called, screening something truck or whatever that is creating a lot of problems you know in that neighborhood with dust and so forth i don't know why and i'm saying to you mark i don't know why they were allowed to do that okay so um they have um so what they presented before was like four or five bays where you go and you get mulch or you know whatever it happens to be and that's all that was approved, you know, at, for, for that. Yet they were, they're running multiple, multiple, multiple business out of that property, which is illegal. And uh, I don't know why they haven't been stopped, but because I expressed it a number of times. The other problem is that they are flooding out. They were flooding out Crooked Lane. Uh, there was one time when we had so much rain that the road had to be closed and all the water was going into um, a neighbor's uh, property. So I don't understand 
why we should approve a site plan that he hasn't even conformed to the existing um, special permit. And it's been going on for a couple of years. And if, if everybody asked each of the board members to go out and look at the property, property is a disaster and it's just a mess. And, you know, we need to do something about it and we shouldn't be doing it. And so I'm gonna ask the other board members, you know, I asked them to go. I hope they went and had a look and see what, what's there. Mr. Chairman, have we received any complaints, any ver any written complaints um, regarding this property? We've had complaints about the water and uh, the, the, the overflow in the water and washing out on the street and so forth. Yes, the neighbors complained about that. Do we have written? Do we have um, official written complaints? I have no idea. I certainly don't know, but I know that we got calls. In fact, we had the whole highway department out there uh, one Sunday because it was so bad and it all flooded out and nobody could use the road. So the oh. fire department's been out there. We had to pump out, you know, the, the um, his property because it was bad. We had nowhere to put the water. Well, unless we have had written complaints and I believe they go into our zoning enforcement officer um, because it's industrial zoned with the special permit. Um, and I and I get that, but if if there are, the complaints. I know that officially they have to be in writing for us to be able to respond so that we can um, measure and monitor um, the improvement. Um, I don't, so are we, do we know, do you know, Ari, if we have any of that? There was a cease, no, where was, there was a cease and desist auto that was issued by, right. the building permit, right. by, by the zoning enforcement officer. Right. Okay. So That's not, that. did I miss that in my packet? No, we didn't. I don't have okay. it either. Because it's not in the packet, okay. It, it wasn't provided. Honestly, it was. It, you know, we were dealing from the standpoint of it being a site plan, not a, uh, not not a, not a specific, not not, not a, an action against an existing facility. That okay. Way. All right. So that's what I want to make sure because I know that you know, on the agenda we're discussing a possible vote on a site plan review. So on for us as a select board. Our purview is to oversee any water allocation for a site plan. Is there going to be a need for water allocation on the site plan? Let me go back to the special permit for a second here. You got a copy of the special permit, which is sent. Yes, to you. I yeah. do have that. And, okay. I, and I did read that there was um, there was a condition in here that the um, zoning board had written in here for. Um, I guess it was amenities for the employees, that that was something that needed to be required and that the Board of Health um, would need to uh, follow up and, and approve that regarding that need for sanitary facilities. And I'm assuming that they have done that. They have yes? not, they have not. So all, the, this the, time, so all this time for almost two years, they haven't done that. And they've had employees, not only their employees, multiple okay. employees from other businesses that did not have sanitary facilities for the Okay, employees. well, so this needs to go back to the zoning board um, of appeals through the zoning enforcement officer. And if they're not meeting the requirements of their special permit, then then obviously that there's, there's repercussions for that. I'm not sure exactly what they are, but I'm sure that there's, there's an issue there in violation of their, of their permit. But are they, Mark, do you, Resnick, do you know if they have um, a need for water allocation for this new site plan? Um, I would have expected that those buildings would have, the new building would have bathrooms and uh, facilities for each of the uh, construction bays uh, and our contractor bays. We did not receive floor plans at this time, at the time of application. So they are supposed to be submitting um, drawings for the buildings um, as well tomorrow. So we'll see whether uh, that's included. I didn't realize being new that there was no wa water um, or facilities at the existing building. So I just thought that was um, uh, already the case there. Um, you know, unfortunately, even if there are zoning violations, I mean, the, the, the planning board really has no enforcement authority, but the, but the information about flooding from the site, contributing to flooding on the road, um, you know, is, is 
is helpful for the board uh, to ensure that um, they do have a drainage plan and drainage um, uh, uh, um, calculations uh, and a report that we will send out to be reviewed as well to ensure that uh, um, you know, post construction, uh, that, that type of uh, drainage problem, at least from this side at that end of the street won't occur. Right. And I think that that is a concern um, of mine that, you know, we, we, we move forward with these developments and we have the plans in place um, to, to alleviate some of the, the drainage issues. But then we find out that depending upon, you know, the type of rain that we have or, um, you know, other conditions that it doesn't really, um, you know, meet what we had put in place to alleviate that. So I want to make sure that because if we're currently having drainage issues and it's affecting the neighbors, um, I would want to make sure that um, anything that's done on this site um, is taking that into consideration, Mark. Yes. Um, Mr. Chair. Recommendation of mine. Yes. So I, I have concerns because I've spoken to plenty of people about this. Um, I have concerns about the drainage and the flooding. I have concerns about the zoning violations. I also have concerns that there's perhaps businesses operating out of there that don't have a business license. It's not fair for all the folks who follow the rules and apply for their business license and pay the fee for others to be operating you know, out of there without one. So um, this, the, on our agenda, it says discuss and possible vote. I guess the vote would be on uh, recommendations we wanna make to the planning board. So we stay you know, within the scope of our agenda. I guess I would make a motion that the planning board not grant anything until all these concerns have been uh, alleviated, corrected fixed in any way, shape, or form, I guess. Yep, I should, I second that motion. No, because I don't know what the, we don't have any for, any formal formal documented issues for this property. Um, Lorraine, it has nothing to do with the documented issues. It has to do with what's being proposed here, number one. Number two is, um, do we want to allow multiple businesses in that one location? Did you visit the site? Yeah, I know exactly what the site is. And what did you think? I mean, what I saw was, um, you know, a landscaping business. I saw a garage with um, some vehicles in it. Um, I don't know if maybe they leased out, you know, part of that garage for service. I don't know. I don't know anything about that. That's not my... My purview, well, but well, I mean that is our responsibility because we grant business licenses to businesses in town. So, if we have folks operating without a business license, then it's our responsibility to figure that out. But that's not the purview of this agenda. That's right. why I'm trying to make the planning board aware that we have these issues, and you know if they go ahead and issue a permit, then, you know, we can call the planning board and say, you know, we're trying to fix things here. Cause you know, I can't tell you how many times on social media in the last week, the town doesn't ever do anything right, but we're actually trying to do something right in this case. So I think we need to let the planning board know that we have these concerns. And, and again, we're just staying with you know, the purview of this agenda item. Right. Unless we want to bring it all up under new business, that's fine with me. Well, the only concern I have with this is that I, I want to make sure that there's, there's proper drainage. Well, there is a cease and desist. I spoke to the zoning um, enforcement person today, and he said that it's an ongoing problem, and the Board of Health person is working with them, and the issue hasn't been resolved. So... That's a zoning violation right there. So there, it's definitely a problematic area. Regardless of whether we have complaints on file, our own people have been in there. So I feel like we have some responsibility to make the planning board aware that there's issues there. Well, then perhaps we just, um, if you could repeat your motion. 
I make, a, I make a motion that we, um, because this is for comments or concerns on the proposed site plan. So I make a motion that we report to the planning board that we have issues with drainage and flooding problems coming from that area, which our, our uh, DPW has had to be out there to, to look at. Um, that we know that the Board of Health Office knows that there's zoning violations because there were supposed to be, um, I don't know if it's a bathroom or what it is, and that we are questioning how many businesses are operating through there. So I think the planning board needs to know these things. Make them aware of those three issues before they issue a permit. Before they approve the site plan. Right. Well, we don't we don't even have we don't even have building plans yet. Right. Right. This is just the site plan. Well, they should so, have building plans though. Yeah, but this is just our comments right now. Right. That's right. the thing that we're and I'll allowed second, to do. And I'll I'll second the, the motion with those comments, Leah. Okay, any further discussion? All those in favor? Carboni I. A B and I. Okay, the camera I I will be attending the meeting just so the board knows. Okay. Thank um, you, okay. Um thank you, Mark. Thank you. Any, thank you, any, Mark. Any yep. new business? Any new business? Any old business? Um I'll take I just I just have something quick on the old business. Um uh, the CPA. I know, Ari, um, are you going to be talking about that in an old business? I guess I can follow your lead. Um, I just, well, I, I, I mentioned something about it during my announcements. Um, I didn't really have something specific to say during old business. Okay. All right. I just have a couple of things here. So I, I, I know I understand that um, based on the, the vote of the town in the ballot, uh, to approve the CPA um, initiative moving forward, that we do have a current bylaw in place that's been approved. Um, so I do know that the advocates um, to support the CPA, you know, have been, um, you know, very, uh, what do I want to say, um, interested in getting their, that part of the bylaw up and running, which would be the designation of that committee. I know that we, as of um, a town, you know, wouldn't be doing any assessments um, until you know July first. I mean, you made that very clear, and I thank you for that, Ari, in your your opening. Um, but I don't see any reason why um, we can't start the process right now to get a board in place for them, um, you know, for that committee, for the CPC. I think that's what I already said. I do that. You come back to us on the 23rd of May. Okay. So we'll be ready for that on the 23rd, Ari. My plan had been, unless you, unless the board directs otherwise, to uh, have an item on the 20th, Jennifer for the 23rd, um, opening up the, the process for application um, because we really don't need to have the CPC on board until the fiscal year starts. Um, but if the board wants to go faster than that, then feel free to direct me otherwise. Okay. Because I just, I mean, I know that, you know, they, interested in getting some of this planning stuff done, especially with, um, you know, what we're going to be discussing at town meeting um, on Article 11 for the annual town meeting, um, for the override. Um, so I know uh, that as we're... You, since, as you know, I, as I formed the board over the weekend, I reached out to town council regarding um, the uh, permissibility, um, what, what is a lot, what, what was permissible as far as um, debt issuance goes, as well as um, under a CPA bond, or as well, it, it is that could even affect the, uh, the, the, uh, the article that the board just approved. And um, I uh, received uh, the response late uh, this afternoon, so I haven't really had time to digest it, but the, the bottom line is that, it's, that, that town council feels it's a bad idea to, um, to, to uh, brush forward with a, um, with it, with a funding proposal before the board, the CPC has done the work that it's supposed to do, which is developing the community preservation plan, developing an application process, reaching out to um, to stakeholders, and coming up and going through that process. Uh, understand that the funds won't even be available until um, next year, 
and the match won't come in until the fall of 2023. Um, in New Bedford, I can tell you our experience, we actually, we actually went to year after the year until we actually had the match in hand before we went out with an application process. I'm not saying you need to do that, but I am saying that um, your bylaw makes it very clear that the, um, that the CPC's responsibility is to come to the annual town meeting, not a special town meeting, but annual, the annual town meeting mm -hmm. with, with funding proposals. Um, and those go to the, you know, to directly to the town meeting. So those, the, those funding proposals that would, would, um, would, would un, in regular order be due um, at the uh, May, 2023 uh, town meeting that would be using the anticipated match um, that, that was identified by the state for, uh, for funding. Okay, so. and the and the question that had arisen about um, borrowing against future funds. So, um, you, you know, you can certainly anticipate ahead when it comes to uh, to borrowing, but you know, it, it would, the, the council's advice was, and I'll share this with you guys all tomorrow. The council's advice was that it's it's um, it would be kind of putting the car ahead of the horse to come forward with a funding proposal before you have a CPP in place. Before you've gone through an application process, it's not really the CPC's job to come up with ideas. What the CPC should be doing is going out and, re and soliciting projects, um, and then and then recommending the, and recommending you know what, what the limited funds available go toward. I think you can also get into the policy question of whether it makes sense, and this is not necessarily the, the select board purview, whether it makes sense to be designating pretty much all of your open space money towards a single project for the, and, and committing that for the next thirty years. One final thing to be aware of, and this you know may, may not be material to the board, but it, but you know as when if you issue debt, however long that the term of that debt is, you are locked in to keep the CPA in place. You, you have to right. you're not allowed to demise the CPA, in, in that in that case. Right. So right. Um, and finally, that debt is not considered um, a separate debt. It's general obligation debt. It's part of part of our debt limit. So from a from the standpoint of the the, the purchase of some point of the, of the rating agencies. When it comes to the purchase of that property, it wouldn't matter whether it's CPA debt or not. It certainly a matter to the taxpayers as far as the debt exclusion goes. But that is also something that you could deal, you could address later on as well. Right. Um, you know, if you if 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 it was if that purchase was approved, it would be perfectly acceptable because there's language in the in the in the article allow this to come back with grants, with other means of funding, any 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 types of plans you want to come up with. Um, and my my advice would be if anyone was asking me. You should do that in regular order for the CPC. Um, you know, CPC should develop its plan and then come forward and say, the CPC, as part of its preservation plan, says, you know, that site is a is the site that we want to preserve. Then, you know, then then come forward with then can come forward with that funding recommendation. Okay. All right. Well, that makes sense because I mean, there's still you know there's still work to be done. I, like I applaud um, the efforts of everybody involved here trying to identify. Um, you know, financial streams, you know, to support the, you know, the 13 million six hundred and twenty five, you know, thousand um, dollars. You know, I, I just think that they're, you know, they should be commended for, you know, for all that effort. Um, you know, I wish I could write a check today, but I can't. But um, the second thing, um, and, you know, I, I know I brought this up, um, you know, Rich at the meeting. I know when you met with um, the developer and you had said that they had given, you had recommended they, they provide a plan or a purchase and sale. At that time, did you see a plan as to what they were recommending for that site? A site or, plan, um, absolutely, absolutely not. We wouldn't take it. We told us- No, did you, told, did you no, see I one? Did no, I did not. So they didn't even talk about what was gonna happen. No, what they were site. talking about was putting in a warehouse and a distribution center. And what we talked about was primarily having to do with the problem with the purchase, previous purchase and sale agreement, which was inaccurate, right. and had the wrong deeds and so forth and so on. And we said to them, please don't come forward with another purchase and sale agreement unless it's correct. And that's okay. what they did. But we would never, I would never accept a site plan. That's not my purview. That belongs to the planning board. Doesn't belong to me as an individual board member. No, right. No, I would I would agree with you because that that becomes a public record and it didn't go through the proper venue at that point. But is um, but I was curious if at that time that they had talked about what their plans were for that property. So they did 
tell you at that point that there was a distribution or a warehouse proposed or and would be proposed. That's what it says in the purchase and sale agreement. You got the same information as us. It's no different than what's being what's it being proposed. Oh, the other thing that we did talk about, which we talked about the first time when we got the purchase and sale agreement, we said absolutely no access would be allowed. I would not support any access for uh, Crooked Lane and Clearpoint Clearpoint Road. And they said, it's your responsibility to figure out how you get out on Route 18. We did okay. talk about that because there's gonna be a huge pushback if some, if you come forward with the proposal to use Crooked Lane and Clearpoint Road. That was it. Okay. Yeah. All right, no, I appreciate that. Thank you yeah. for clarifying. Yeah, no problem. I mean, you haven't talked to the uh, you haven't talked to the owner of Lakeville Country Club, have you? No, no I haven't. Okay, I just want to make sure. You know, people say things, and you know. Um, I, Mr. Chair, I on this subject, um, while I understand um, the position of the CPA folks, um, I'd like to remind everyone that. Our town government works with a combination of volunteers and professional staff. Um, sometimes as volunteers, we need to listen to the professional staff, whether it be town administrator, planners, zoning enforcement people, building commissioners, board of health people. Um, we relied on our board of health so much during COVID to make decisions and we made really good decisions, but um, everyone that I've spoken to feels that rushing of the professional staff, feels that rushing the CPA and everything to do with the CPA just isn't the right move right now. Now, if you wanna know who I've spoken to, feel free to call me, 774-766-0091. Um, I just think sometimes rolling things out it, with haste is just not the right way to do things. I've spoken to several folks from the CPA. I commend them. This is the first time CPA has passed um, in Lakeville. It was the third time and we got it through finally. And I, I will take credit for reminding folks in January of 2021 that CPA was a thing and that may be the thing it was time for it, um, but I'd also like to caution everyone into jumping and making not great decisions just because we want to try to save this piece of land. I think folks have to be ready to pay the taxation on it if they wanna save the land. And we can work on alternate sources of funding after the fact if that's what it takes, but to put together the CPA in a rush, our park commission appointed someone and they didn't even have it on their agenda because they were rushing to do it. So now we have to do that decision all over again. The park commission doesn't even have a full committee itself. So I, I think sometimes while I appreciate people's passion, I mean, you know, Rich, you and I led the town during COVID. We didn't make crazy haphazard decisions for our town. We listened to the professional staff. We took their guidance and then we made the most appropriate decisions for the town of Lakeville. We didn't make decisions like we were a city. We made decisions based on the rural town that we are. Um, I just feel like the voters were told this would take effect July 1st. They were told they wouldn't have to vote on anything until after July 1st. And now we want to drop a decision on them at this town meeting. I mean, I think that's disingenuous. And I know the CPA folks are not going to be happy with me for saying all this stuff, but I represent a bunch of the voters. 180 more people voted for me than my opponent. So I'm representing all those folks that voted for me and saying, um, I. I think the thousand people that voted for CPA voted for it because they weren't expecting to make a decision on it until next year at the earliest. So I think we have to listen to the professional staff and the attorneys and not rush 
a massive decision like this, tying up money for 30 years, um, when we could have other, other projects that are equally as important. But anyways, no, thanks. And if I can just to, to jump on that, um, you know, I don't know that it would necessarily be, um, you know, a rush in not listening to the professionals, but we haven't had a meeting until, well, we had a meeting last, last week, which I think was, was brilliant, um, bringing everybody together um, and having the discussion because of what we were being faced with for a town. But what I do know, because I do also speak to many, many residents, is um, there was concern as to why did it come so late in the game when we learned about this purchase and sale in the beginning of March, even though we had to get, um, you know, town council to review the purchase and sale to determine whether or not it was a bona fide offer. I get that, but I think we I, need to. Get I really, Lorraine, I really like to interrupt you right there, right exactly at this point. The first purchase and sale agreement we got from the same person was not a legitimate offer. If you think we were going to take one less day just to rush the process. Oh, no, that's, no, no. That's not that's where un, I was going. That's not where I, I was mean, going. So yeah, I but, appreciate. Yeah, no, but you're saying you got it at the beginning of March. What took so long? What took so long was the first offer we got from this person wasn't it wasn't a valid offer. Right. So, but that but you need to let me finish. What I was going to say was that I think we can get better as a board by just having the discussion at the meetings as to what's going on. We could have had a meeting to say that we've received a purchase and sale, we've submitted it to town council to review, to determine whether it's a bona fide offer. And it's more of us being able to explain to the, you know, to the residents, this is in the Lakeville Country Club is a, is a, is a big deal, just like the Lakeville Hospital was. I'm just saying that we could get better at bringing this information in an open meeting so that the public can understand what's going on. Um, obviously, there's, you know, some discussions that, you know, we can't have an open session, they have to be an executive. But in this case, we could have very easily in the beginning of March just said, hey, we received a purchase and sale from, um, you know, the, the owner of the property and that we're having town council review it, you know, to determine whether it's a bona fide offer. That's what I think that the residents in this town um, deserve and, and um, expect. Well, you know what, Rich? Uh, can, I say, can, I say can, may, for, for, can I say something first? Well, you know, before, I really just want to cut everyone off and say, the last time around when this happened, we took the time and we had an executive session, and the executive session is where we hashed out a lot of the stuff that it wasn't a bona fide offer. This time, because we were trying to rush we went pat we we avoided that we didn't do that we skipped that step and we're still ending up in a place where we're finding new things out every day so for those who think that you know we've delayed the process we even skipped a, an extra week trying to get together for an executive session on it so and 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 we're continuing it's continuing to unravel for us because we tried to get it out so lorraine while i appreciate your hope that we can, you know, get better in the future when you're given a time clock of 120 days. That's not a whole lot of time. And if people okay, don't like obviously that, we should call their state representatives on that one. No, and you know, another project down the road, yeah, we can get better. But I just think that, you know, we we had some time to bring it in front of the public in March. That's all. Um, you you can go back and look at the letter that was sent by Derek Maxey having to do with this purchase and sale agreement. It was directed to the Board of Selectmen. It was directed mm -hmm. to the Planning Board. It was directed to open space. It was directed to conservation. And I also believe it was directed to the Board of Assessors. Mm -hmm. Everybody, including us, all got it on the same day. So don't say that that's not the case. So there was plenty of opportunity. As a matter of fact, the planning board was talking about it at one of their meetings and it wasn't even on their agenda. So the information was there and it was public. And so 
The situation is number one, you have to give it to the board of assessors. And then the board of assessors have to calculate the back taxes to make sure that you know the maps and the deeds and stuff were correct. And then you turn around and you send it to town council. And as we told you before, it was a complete mess. So we're supposed to bring something forward to the public that's not accurate, like what happened the last time. I don't think that's a good idea to do that. Well, so, I'm not even saying about inaccuracies. I mean, I I'm just saying. saying. I don't know what you're saying because everybody got the same information on the same day. Same exact day. Mm -hmm. Check your emails. Everybody. It's true. Go back and check. Yeah, no, I'm just talking about the oh, first. Isn't that true? Isn't that true? I, I don't know if they, if they received the certified letters as stated in the purchase and sale agreement. I don't know that. No, it was directed to our office to distribute to the planning board and whatever. And we did that. Okay. All right. After day. we after we got the bona fide offer. Um, the same day we from got the, town council. Same day we got the letter. You can't skip that step, Lorraine. You know that. You can't skip those skip those steps of vetting the offer. No, I'm not saying that we we would do that. That's not what I was saying at all. Well, then I'm not quite sure where you think we could have saved time or gotten it out sooner, but. Anyways, I, I, I guess have to I, go. I don't understand. I, I don't mind getting beaten up, you know, at meetings. Okay. I can take it. But the people are taking their anger out on the wrong people. Is <laughs> Derek and the Maskies on this, right? They're the problem, not us. We're just bringing, we're, we're we're just bringing, given... we're just bringing forward what was given to us. And then we have a decision to make. Mm -hmm. The Board of Selectmen can either decide to exercise that or not exercise it. And if you recall, we suggested, and that's what we did, we're gonna bring it to town meeting, okay? They have the mm -hmm. people decide. So I don't understand what we did wrong here. I, no, I I'm not saying that we did anything wrong. Well, I'm just well, saying that we can get better it, as far as um, the timing of it, that's all. The timing- well, if You can that. make 120 days longer than 120 days, I'll agree with you. But 120 days is 120 days. That's all that's to it. And the first two, three weeks was chewed up just trying to vet the offer because the offer wasn't a valid offer the last time. I mean, and then if, if we presented something that wasn't accurate, then we get you know beat up like rich said for putting out the wrong information so it's a thankless job but we're doing the best we can and i i i commend everyone i commend the planning board for they have huge roles to play in this i, mm -hmm. I mean you know everyone is put that but but that's what i said sometimes the volunteers those of us who choose to participate in our town government we have to rely on the professionals if the lawyers are saying, listen, you got to be careful here, then I'm not going to rush to get something to people when guidance is saying we got to be careful. So I, I don't, I don't, the problem is the timing. If people have problem with 120 days, they should write the folks at the state level because those are the rules that we have to work with. Okay. All right. Is there anything else? <laughs> I uh, I just you know it, it's important. I mean, you're on the board, Lorraine. That you know um, some of the misinformation that's putting out there is is just atrocious. I'm sorry. You know, we're providing the facts as best we can, and we're going to continue to do that, as Ari said, in his first part of his meeting. That we'll do whatever we can to provide whatever information. And, you know, there's been a public documents request and we'll provide whatever they want to, you know, we don't have a problem. And if somebody wants to come and sit in the conference room and look at somebody's emails, no matter who it is, have at it. You know, we'll do that because it's public information. But, you know, to say that we're withholding any information is false, is completely false. So did we did I heard that there would there might be a public records request, but did we actually get one? We did. We did. We did. Who, who from? Do we? Can we ask who from? Yeah. Uh, from John Jenkins and uh, Heather Bardwell. 
And it wasn't requested to the board. It was requested to individuals. Oh, okay. Oh. Oh, okay. I will back out. Me too. Um, you guys want to provide all your emails? Go for it, you know? Not if no one asks for them. I, I don't. I, I already looked at it. Okay, my name is in there. I don't have one email from Derek or the developer. None whatsoever. And that's well, what was doing. what was the request? They wanted all, all the communications between Derek, uh, me, Ari, um, the building inspector. Hmm. I have none. Um, I have none. Anybody want to look at them? Again, there's none there. For the record, I'm not sure why we have a planning board telling us the date they received it, which was three weeks later and on Facebook. Um, and I know we typically don't take Facebook, but because it's relevant, um, right, because we weren't going to give it to everyone until we knew the offer. No, 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 no. The letter that was sent from Derek with the purchase and sale agreement was sent to the planning board. Okay. Yeah, the way it went yeah, is yeah, not our responsibility. Right, it's that's the in the purchase board. and sale. That's right, Rich. You bring up you bring up a point because that was in the purchase and sale. I remember highlighting it that they yeah. were going to send um, a a copy to the the planning board, the conservation commission. Yeah, open um, space. Yep, and I believe our town council responded in their letter um, that that was supposed to have happened too. Did we ever did we ever vet that to see if that actually happened? That's not our responsibility to do that. We got our copy. I, I can tell you that I took the version that we received in the town in, in the, the select board office, and I immediately sent and I, and I shared it with you all, and I shared it with council to, to determine whether it was a legitimate whether it was a legitimate offer. That's what I did. Yeah, no, I know you gave us the, the copy, but I guess oh, I don't have my packet with me right now, but that might be something I can follow up with tomorrow. But I I remember now saying that. It was in the purchase and sale, and I and town council responded in their letter back to us um, that there should have been um, mail that went to all the other committees too at the same time that we got ours at the, the initial. I think Mark wants to say something. Yeah, I uh, just confirmed that the planning board uh -oh, did receive. I can't hear Rich. I'm sorry, Mark's here. Yeah, the planning board did receive the mail. Uh, Is it me? Right? Can you hear me? We yes. can hear you. I can't hear anybody. Oh. We can hear you. We can hear you. Uh, yes, well, the planning board did receive the letters at the same oh. time it was sent to the Board of Selectmen. They were sent around. And that's probably why it was discussed okay. at the next then, planning board meeting. Did you hear that, Lorraine? No, I finally get the volume back. OK, go ahead, Mark, say it again. Uh, so the planning board did receive the uh, package with the uh, uh, purchase and sale agreements at the same time as it was sent to the board of select uh, to the select board, and that's um, why it was discussed at that meeting, planning board meeting, just kind of as an informal new business, uh, no decisions, you know. So it wasn't on the agenda, but it was just to inform the board um, that it had been received. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, anybody Thank else? Want bring, anybody else want to bring anything else up? I'll intend a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Carboni, aye. Baby, and I. Uh, La camera, aye. Thank you.